Welcome back, everyone. We are here at the Paddlelands World Championship. Bidey forgot to put his headphone on. I'm Golden Boy alongside with Bidey and Bees. And there you see everyone gaming some paddle Paladins, playing some Realm Royale. You see Bart there sitting around waiting for a segment on the Smite channel. And then there's us. All right, it's the final matchup of the day here for the PC side of things. Coming up after this, we will have our Xbox Finals for the console. Wars. It's going to be a good one. But, uh, Bidey, you almost forgot the headset there, buddy. I, I, I recognize. I, no, but not at all. I, it's been on the whole time. It's been on the whole time. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me more. <laughs> tell you more? Well, Dad, he'll tell you about it. it. Yes, that's right. The Borker here. Got to have the Borker. The Basically, the best analyst in all of Paladins is the Borker. And there, here you go. Here's, here's Borker. Right here. Right here. Um, all right. Last match of the day, NIP, Space Station Gaming. We've seen some, I would say, some pretty dominant matches thus far. Fnatic, Envy, even Navi, even though that game was very competitive. Yeah. Uh, what are we expecting for this one, kind of just giving everyone the lay of the land, Mighty, or, or Beast, whoever wants to? I, I think it's going to be an intense set. Yeah. Um, I agree. If you watched SSG at that land, they really took it to Fnatic and made them pull out all the stops. So if anybody's going to be able to show a real powerhouse here and an upset, yeah. it'd be SSG. Okay, so That's SSG. Sure. We also got a Space Station gaming guy over here to the side, okay? <laughs> So I think he's we're, very happy. I think, we're, I think we know where his allegiance lies. Yeah. Uh, Bees, what about you? Uh, I think if Nip show up, I think Nip take it. I think if Nip don't do their best, then Space Station take it. Thank you so much, John Madden, for that's, that's that. That's very neutral of you. Is that very analysis. neutral? It's a very. I, just, I know you're. you're you know, EU. you're not from here. You're EU, but EU. that's a very John Madden thing to do. Uh, you, know? okay. you see, if okay. they win, they're gonna win. You see, if they score the most points, they're gonna win the game. But if they don't. They're going to lose the game. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had no idea. So, very neutral uh, stance there you took, Beast. I have, I have. Uh, I mean, I do genuinely believe that Nip is going to take it overall, but, you know, just be nice. Come on. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. SSG is not a team who's going to be nice here. Like, I think they have the potential to actually win this set out. Um, in terms of just talent and capabilities, like, they have such an amazing blaster player in Frozen guy. Like, mm -hmm. Frozen is insane on everything that he plays. He's a master class of EV. He just, he pulls everything that you need to. And then the rest of his team always manages to put in what they need to. And this was a big pickup oh. as well. Uh, formerly from Kanga, you got uh, Digidog. I remember him from last year as well. This guy, tons of talent. For sure. What, what does he bring to this NIP roster? Uh, he brings a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of aggression, and he uh, he likes to flank a lot in unusual ways that we kind of weren't previously used to in EU. Uh, you see him in the back line with a lot of champions that maybe necessarily others wouldn't take into those positions, and when he when he does it, and he does it correctly, it is phenomenal plays, and it really does help his team out to kind of gain space and then just push in afterwards to clean up after him. Pretty interesting pickup, right? To, you know, NIP going to Australia and, and, and picking up one of the top players from that region it's, here. It's an interesting choice because, like, when you look at what EU has, they have capable players like that. But I think the Australian region in general is like this great hybrid of like NA aggression, but EU control. And I think that's the reason why you're looking at such a player like that. He's been to every land. He always managed to perform. So if anybody's going to like bring something totally new and a different outlook to a team, I mean, Nip went from kind of underperforming to finally starting to bring themselves out. And they qualified here with without needing to go through the PWC. So Space Station Gaming, what, what, what's the temperature check on, on those guys? Guys. Are they are they kind of the more consistent team? Are they an explosive team? What should fans be expecting to see here? And first map could tell us this as well. NIP's pick Bright Marsh. Interesting map pick. I think with the Space Station guys, um, they have a kind of very specific way that they play in, in using their, their, their front line, Sadak, uh, especially when he gets the Ruckus. It's kind of a flank champion, and he, he does a very good job of being very patient, mm -hmm. allowing the enemies to continue the fight for long enough that they kind of forget that they're missing the tank. And then eventually, once that kind of realization kicks in, he jumps in, he goes in for the back line, he takes out one of the uh, damage dealers or the support, and then from there, they try to snowball off of that. Um, I think the best thing that Nip can do in this circumstances 
be ready for that. Just be waiting for the flank to come in. Try and shut down Sadak as soon as possible. And then from there, do the reverse snowball as instead of what Space Station wanted. The space, the, the, the reverse snowball. The reverse snowball. This is my new terminology. Yeah, the reverse snowball. <laughs> patent pending. Yeah. yeah, patent pending reverse snowball. I like it. I like it. All right, so NIP have significant more uh, land experience than this than this uh, space station gaming roster, but they've been explosive. They have been uh, kind of a personality within this whole competition. Everyone's been really curious as to like what they're going to do next here. And this is, would you say this is their greatest challenge yet, or or is this? It's, it's hard to say, you know, because yeah. what you're trying to balance out here is like Space Station Gaming took it to Fnatic. They almost won the set, but then they kind of fell short. So, like, you look at where does Nip stack up against that? Well, they made the qualification spot, so they're here first. Mm. So it's really about what SSG has done to refine their style, figure out why they lost against Fnatic, because technically I think they might have been favored to win that set at the time, and uh, they just made a lot of small mistakes in their draft. So we'll see if they've improved since their last show. Well, now here come the bands and NIP is going to take out Ruckus, Space Station Gaming takes out Khan, and then the Androxis for NIP. So this is interesting, it seems like Nip have kind of just taken the initiative to just say straight away, rather than try and deal with Sadak at his best, you we're going to take Ruckus. away his best champion. We're going to take the Ruckus from Sadak, make him feel maybe a little bit uncomfortable, and see what then Space Station has to pull out in the reverse. We have not seen Makoa much. I think we saw him one time in the first series of the yeah, day. On the split stone quarry game. He's a scary champion to let yes. come through because of that hook and that ult. It just, every second point when that ult finally comes online, you know, you've got to kill him essentially twice. He's got two lives you with him. And that hook is a here. permanent displacement for somebody if they get hit. You know, they're usually going to be certified dead. Benara and Cassie Lock. Cassie has been. Uh, again, you know, we, we kind of reference uh, Cassie being banned out in, in the last series, and that we were thinking that wasn't a priority ban, but Cassie's so effective, and, and this has really been prevalent this entire day. Cassie has been a difference maker, and Drogos gets picked up for NIP. The great thing about the Cassie pick as well is it depends on whether the uh, Nip decides to go for a more tank heavy uh, composition, then you can take the big game Cassie, which gives you extra bonus damage uh, depending on the HP pool of your target, or well, otherwise you can go. For Exactly, the Makoa ult, that's huge. Uh, or you can go for the Blast Shot Cassie if they take more of a damage composition, and then the Blast Shot Cassie becomes more of a burst champion to take down the damage dealers rather than the um, front lines. But yeah, if you this get a big game team. onto an ulted Makoa, it like a it's like six shots and he's dead. It's like, it's not even an ult anymore. That's insane. Well, and, and you know, you the talked about you the taking out Makoa right. essentially two times. Maybe that's something you're gonna have to run here. Leanne and Fernando picked up for Space Station Gaming. Fernando seeing a a lot of play here, but Leanne seeing a lot of play after being initially banned out early so many times today. And Leanne has been very effective. Do you remember that yeah. Frozen God Leon game? Mm -hmm. It was pretty monstrous. He uh, kind of carried a game, the whole thing. I think he's so, capable of doing that this time. Oh, yeah. So, most oh. certainly. I think it really depends, though, on Nip's positioning. You know, they are a much more competent team, I think, than the one that they played at the time. So it's really going to be showing on them to show, ooh, Talus. Okay. What, what what makes this Talus pick so interesting, so spicy, potentially? The thing with Talus is it's kind of like it's, it's very map dependent, and I think as well sometimes it's very team dependent. Nip is a team that has consistently pulled out Talus and has had good results with it. Whereas we see with some other teams, that have taken Talos, they don't tend to have the, the pressure, the damage, and the kind of consistency that Bonkar has had throughout the season with Talos. Mm. I think he's a fantastic Talos player, and I think he will do very well. So who do you got taking the game one? EU, EU. All right, what, what about you, buddy? SSG, no question. Let's go. All right, well, the desk is split. Let's hear it from our casters. You got Gormizer and Pretty here on the call. Gentlemen, take it away. Vamos SSG here. We got a split desk. Gormizer, are you <laughs> leaning any one particular way after seeing the picks lock? The only thing that is making me lean more towards SSG right now, and I know Vox will be happy I mentioned that, is that Talus just loses on Bright Marsh. Like every single Bright Marsh game we've seen with Talus, he has been nothing able to contribute, nothing to really give to his team. There's so much that can go wrong, so very little that can go right. And so it's up to NIP to maybe change those stats. That's right. Statistically, you just can't argue with it. Talus has not been the star of the show on Bright Marsh as we load in game number one of our final PC set of the day. Stick around for some console action later. It's Ninjas in Pajamas versus Space Station Gaming. We're going to load in and take a look at 
some of the talent selection. I don't think there should be anything scarier that is going to be Diggy Dog on the Drogos. But like Heidi had mentioned, like the desk had gone a little bit more in depth into is FRZ God on that Leon. Those two champions, I think, are going oh, yeah. to be pretty much the playmakers overall throughout this entire game. Leon specifically, FRZ God proved that he can play this champion so insanely well during the placement land. And I expect that that's going to show here. And it's kind of something new for him, right? He's really touted as one of the bl best blaster players in the world. So we'll see if he can find some success. Already early blood drawn by Ninjas in Pajamas. Tal has said to struggle here on Bright Marsh. And that's something I want to pay attention to this game, Gormizer, is Yes, statistically, you couldn't argue with that. But contextually, if you're looking at the players playing now, we're going to have those skewed matchups in the placement rounds. Yeah. Do you expect a different story to be told here for Bonkers, Tal? I mean, Bonkers definitely making sure that it's going to start off in his favor. It's just when it comes down to defending, when it comes down to aggressing into a payload or being able to hold back a team is when it makes a big difference, 51 to 48. And as you can see, Bonkers is the only one who has really truly been taken down. NIP have a lot more to push out Space Station Gaming. But Anara Fernando, a she and just a huge body in the terms of Inara to take down. They're going to control this point. Oh my goodness. 150 on the clock. Mark it, folks. It's the first dragon punch of the game. Diggy Dog wasting no time. FRZ God, he finds one, finds two, finds three. He's going for four. FRZ God, the young gun, looking for all five. Rochelle's going to steal away the killing blow, but I'm sure SSG are more than happy with the way that first team fight plays out. He's definitely starting to feel comfortable on that one, and I think that is one of the scariest things. Again, these players, the more comfortable they get, especially SSG, I'm the better flashbacks. they start to perform. I'm I mean, flashbacks. they just start riding that momentum. And we had mentioned this, like, during placements, heavily momentum-based. You give them an inch, they will turn it into a mile. They know what to do with a lead, and honestly, they have the draft to do it. So far, game one has proved Fairly pivotal. It's been interesting to watch, though, each team getting that map pick in this best of five and having a little bit of time to chill. This is not that best of three, one and done, you know, type of style that we were watching the placement rounds. I think each team should be able to get their map pick here. So NIP need to find a way to bounce back as the top seed. The top seed in the tournament has always taken the first map of this event so far. I mean, with the way things have been going, Bright Marsh, again, not only not that good for Talos, but once you start to lose even just a little bit, you feel like you fall behind, or at least I feel like the it's teams have been falling behind. Sure. It's just frustrating. The map doesn't necessarily lend itself that well. So you have a lot of pressure to kind of keep yourself pushing forward. And with the way things are going, I actually need to see a little bit more out of Diggy Dog. I think I've seen him die more often than I've seen him pick up kills. It's going to be difficult, right? Not the direct hit scan counter, but Cassie at this level is going to be pretty close. I mean, FRZ God is playing lights out. Diggy Dog is going to have to watch his head. I'm thinking back to the set, honestly, earlier in the day when we saw Nabi and BP play, the way Ninu was very meticulous. He always kept track of Mutu, but it was really on, uh, you know, his teammates to sort of take that matchup off the board and allow him to have some space. But with this first push, SSG taking some time to get this one rolling. They've only got 45 seconds left on the clock, but they have reached the primary choke here on Bright Marsh. Well, they've been picking up the kills. Koa Bonker both going to get taken out right there, and if they can keep this pressure up, they're going to be able to apply just a lot more. Diggy Dog's the main target. He's going to go down. That opens up so much room for them. This is really, really looking like something. SSG putting together a couple of strings of kills. They're using ultimates. NIP have everything available, but so far we just haven't seen a heartbeat out of them. They look like they could go down 2-0 here. I mean, the question for them is whether or not they want to use ults. They're going to be diving out of the base. They have the respawn proximity if it's going to at least apply something for them, but it's going to be picking up kills and bonker. Diggy Dog haven't been able to find enough. There's going to be an immortal to keep SSG alive and in it. They're going to be looking for the push. That tells us they're going for conversion here. Brazil wants this 2-0 lead here. Fire spits from the Australian from downtown. So many cultures represented in this matchup here. It's a one-for-one one so far into overtime here. The offense is struggling now. Ancient Rage is pop. That is a huge cooldown used for NIP, and with it, they will put their foot down, and they will hold one-to-one. -one. You start seeing those rockets hit a lot more consistently towards the end of the round. The Diggy Dog not only getting warmed up, but feeling a little bit more comfortable, confident, and it's the change. If he starts finding more kills, he becomes a little bit more than an execute. Otherwise, the only thing he's going to be useful for is his ult, and it's all just because FRZ God has his number. He is zoned in on him. If Drogos comes into sight, you can expect to see what you just saw happen to pretty much everybody 
else on NIB happened to Diggy Dog. Oh my goodness. I wanted the pedicure, man. First round of the tournament, too. I mean, looking good, feeling good, coming out of the gate. Very, very strong here. You're seeing both of the DPS players for SSG come out with a pretty strong numbers being put up. Cassie has <laughs> silently been allowed to do her thing all day. And this sort of happened in the placement event as well. FRZ God is popping off. That allows Ares to have one of the most successful Talos performances of that event. And that's kind of happening here. Here comes the dive. True power to the backline. Bonker immediately has to exit, though. He gets nothing done with his ult. And those two, three headshots in a row, FRZ God immediately helps take down that Makoa. Does end up trading his own life out, but that's more just the lack of pressure from the rest of Space Station. They lose their healer. They lose their main carry. And now you're going to start seeing the fall. And Nara has no one to keep her alive. There it is. And honestly, not a very good enlightenment there from FRZ God. He should have noticed that the illusory rift had gone out on to Ying. Obviously, he's not going to get the kill. That's a full HP target. The second that projectile goes out, he dies, and then right back to full HP there. Not effective use of ultimates here out of SSG. Diggy Dog lets rip another Dragon Punch, and he's going to live Gormizer. This is big. Most of the time, the only counterplay you can really do against a Dragon Punch is just try to kill the Drogos. They're going to be able to get him. It might just be too little too late. They do get rid of Fernando. He's going to respawn in, but that's 96% picked up for NIP. They're going to be able to walk it through, except Inara finally touching down on the point. Dread Serpent's going to be able to come through and buy a little bit of time as well. Oh, and no. now they're just trying to fight back in, but FRZ God goes down. mid out goes down. They don't have the pressure. Really unfortunate there. FRZ God just walks out into the Ash Dash, takes so much pressure, and now it's overtime. It's for NIP. It's 99%, not a prayer for SSG in sight. They are going to lose this payload. Go down two points to one. And that's just good ultimate use. Like, when it comes down to it, NIP were so, able yeah. to read what SSG were looking for. They found Space Station and just got them too early for them to react. They read where FRZ God was going to be. They force an enlightenment and pick up a kill on top of it. The Immortal was used at the end of the last round, so there was no real saving grace for them. And then the retake is just going to fall apart. And again, my eyes are on Diggy Dog and Bonker. If Bonker can keep this up, record two already. It's mainly going to help against the Doc, but it's just going to give him that ability to box out, get in a little bit better, and fight a little bit stronger. Coming through with a couple of ultimates, actually. NIP trying to get something going early on the offense. Well, they will do just that. Two kills already coming through. A third on its way, maybe making it four. Sadak able to answer on to just one, but when it's all said and done, it's a five for two exchange. The offense will certainly make some progress off the back of that. And again, 85%. I wish we had a counter for how many times he's charged up the Dragon Bunch because he has been charging it faster than I think we've seen pretty much any Drogos this game already. 98% should be able to get another one. And at the end of the round, you're not necessarily looking for a hard alt conversion maybe to go through, but with a minute left, you could easily throw that out there right now and just get a free kill. Here it is. Who's he looking for? Diggy Dog trying to fight Cassie, and he will fire spit all of his cooldowns, ready to go. He's going to rip one in there, has another potentially on the docket, but he will be taken down. FRZ God finds a cheeky angle, now hitting the gas pedal on the bird. He's not going to miss a shot. The young gun backs up for the time being. One minute left on the clock. Defense holding sound and strong. But like you mentioned, those ultimates coming back up for NIP. They'll have about a minute or so. Look for Diggy Dog's Dragon Punch to be charged by the time this round is over. Whether he uses it or not, that's a different story. And what are you expecting from them with this 2 1 score line? For NIP, I think they're just going to try to pressure out as much of Space Station as they can. Try to get those ults, try to force an Immortal, force a Dread Server, maybe force an Enlightenment, like get those out of their hands and then start the fight out. But with this kind of line of scrimmage right in the middle of the map, it's going to save a lot, and that's going to be 50% returned to FRZ God as he gets that kill. So this is pretty much the opposite they need. Like without a Dragon Punch, without something hard to initialize the fight, it's going to be a lot more difficult just to push Space Station Gaming back towards the payload. You know, that's something that, that sort of sparked my memory, and that was what FRZ got, I feel, was doing really, really well during the placement rounds when he had that pop-off performance on Bright Mars. Because he was always getting the killing blow and the recharge to 50% on his Leon ultimate. That is definitely something I'd love to see him focus on more here as we move forward into this game. It's going to be a one-for-one -one exchange headed into overtime there. Diggy Dog manages to bring that back in NIP's favor. Two for one now. Bonkers trying to gas pedal down some targets, but he is admittedly struggling a little bit. And you're going to have to go through over 50% of this push in overtime. Bonkers going down, Cruncy doing whatever he can, but Makoa can only live so long unless he wants to pop that Ancient Rage, but that's such a big cooldown to use for something that's not even guaranteed to be a push, but they're going to be able to get a little bit of leeway, a little bit of pressure, and then it all gets knocked away. Basically, whether Diggy Dog lives or dies, that's what I feel is, is the determining factor for a lot of these NIP pushes, but 
the boys of SSG, the backliners, are finding ways to squeak into li little lines of sights, finding cheeky angles to keep the Australian under pressure. Good damage so far this game. A lot of dragon punches coming out of Diggy Dog. It's something that he has absolutely got to keep up. He's got all eyes on him, really. His old boys are already knocked out of the tournament. He is really Australia's <laughs> technically last hope for a championship, and what a story that would be. Young Dylan making the move over to Sweden, lives with his his captain and support player Bird now. Big, big change for him, his lifestyle. And it has paid off for him now. NIP qualifying, auto qualifying to this event. They did not have to go through the placement rounds. Started off, you know, a rocky couple of weeks as you can imagine any major roster change would, but they really got going quick. And I'm just hoping we see the momentum keep high here. Diggy Dog does not get walled off. And now a narwhal was not quite good enough, but Diggy Dog's indecision will result in two kills going the way of FRZ. Got Ash taken out mid flight Gormizer, she cannot land, and it's SSG all across the board. And it's everything they've needed. Oh, Still no. being able to hold on to the alignment, having that extra key just available for FRZ God to stay alive in case he gets caught out. They get aggressive, they zone away NIP, and dismounts on this map are going to be important. There's only a couple of avenues to get by, and last earlier, we actually ended up seeing a couple of Naras slip through, and that's something that you're not going to see SSG do, but fighting with Ash right now, Koa, going to get Dread Serpented away. Oh my goodness, onto the high ground, and just left alone. Koa, I don't know how much he's going to be able to get done there. FRZ God rips one. FRZ God rips two. He's looking for three here. Which way is this going to go? Koa gets a big heal, and he's able to calm this one down. It's overtime in favor of SSG. NIP scrambling to get on the objective, but FRZ God finds his third kill of his engagement. Honestly, throughout all of that, the one thing that Kama has, Koa throwing his ult out. Like he's going all in on FRZ God. He has no backup until Dicky Dog comes yeah. around the corner, but Dicky Dog's looking left. FRZ God goes right. Right. Everything's going to be clean for SSG. Up. And at that point, you just ignore Ash. Like, okay, you're immune. Have fun standing on this staircase yeah. away from the point, not looking at the objective. You had nowhere to go if you're Koa. She looked a little bit high and dry there. Ultimate usage is going to be incredibly important. I mean, talk about it's a certain dominance, man. You have got to be on point going against Anara. I feel like, personally, that is NIP's only hope at contesting Anara on the objective. That's your eight seconds of freedom where it doesn't matter how strong Anara is. You can actually push this one back. And now we're just seeing that for all. I mean, NIP are certainly not giving up an inch here to Space Station Gaming. There's going to be a dragon punch on the defense. They want to hold this as long as they can. Diggy Dog in a good little spot here. Diggy Dog finds three. Fire spits are good. The rockets are good. The dragon punch is already back to 70 percent he's dropping the absolute hammer on ssg right now and this is exactly what you get you look at his items he's gone into the morale boost three he is charging it up I, even faster than bird is able to charge that illusory rift and he's got himself some rejuvenate he's got a record like he is itemizing specifically to try and kill off as many members of space station but it is that dragon punch coming up so often that makes it hard for Rachel, makes it hard for sadat to do anything they're just always getting altered it's really going to task them heavily with resources management. Obviously, Immortal is one of the only ways to work around Dragon Punch in the game, but it charges far, far slower than a morale boost three Drogos. Let me tell you, just on paper, in practice, no matter how you look at it, young Dylan is going to be getting his ultimate far quicker than Sadak on Fernando. Right now, though, still potential to try and close this out. Actually, uh -oh, able to take the map. That's going to be two kills, that's three kills, four kills picked up for NIP as they're just going to go through, and they're falling so fast they don't know how to react, and now they're going to be able to regroup, but that opens up so many doors for SSG. Four, four for nothing without a single ultimate use. The only saving race is how far the payload still is from the finish line here. 20 seconds on the clock, final corner being rounded by SSG. They have the chance to steal away game one and then go to their map pick for game number two. This is huge. Ancient Rage still available. All five ults available for NIP. If you're Space Station, being able to get rid of any of those is going to be huge. And you're coming up the last hill. Four seconds before overtime. Koa goes up. Koa's coming down, but he doesn't have the ult pop just yet. There's the Ancient Rage trying to do whatever they can, but the Immortal in response. SSG are looking for it here. They want to stay alive, but Sadak will not. Burns his biggest defensive resource and then systematically dismantled there. Every single frontline ultimate used. So when it's all said and done, I feel like that exchange comes out about even. 
I would actually even say it might be better for Space Station. Like, Ancient Rage is one of the few it things that big. could be completely game-changing. Like, a good seismic crash will set up your team, but you still have to have that follow-up. Ancient Rage can single-handedly change the pace of a game if you can pick up those kills. So you get rid of that, you get rid of a Dragon Punch. There's 19, 11, and 9 for Diggy Dog, but he still doesn't have that execute online just yet. It'll be up in a few seconds anyway for him, but that affects the beginning of the round. Mm, Talus floating just above the tanks and damage, but now we have to remember that Talus is not all about, you know, massive damage numbers. Yeah. He's very window-based when he can engage and things of that nature. So looking at the ultimates available, it's three for SSG. And NIP sitting on just two. 34% on the Dragon Punch, but more Albu's three is going to take care of that. Nice and quick here. SSG, initial capture point progress going their way at the tune of about 30%. Trying to fight on the side. Going to be able to at least get rid of the shield from Fernando and force a retreat. But that's 30%, like we had said, for Space Station Gaming being picked up. And that's the way these fights have been going with Inara. He just put someone on the point for a little bit, let the initial engagement go however it's going to go, and then you pull back a little bit, regroup, wait to engage one more time, maybe try to burn some ults, and with Talos going in, Bonker, if you can kill him off, that would be so big, but you actually lose Ares instead. Critical kill there for Bonker. Here comes the Enlightenment. It's going to find a kill. FRZ got trying to back out of this room, but he just won't be able to make it. Sadak is not there to provide the peel in time. It's a three for one now in favor of NIP. They're on the objective here. This is looking good, better and better. Better for them, you might even say. No ultimates available, but they are certainly in the driver's seat. And just the amount of timing you need, 81% and still rising for them, and they're going to get aggressive. They're getting in their face. They're making sure Space Station don't have a way to slip through, but there's a couple members on point ready to go. And Nara going to be standing as long as she can, the healing being dumped into her. There it is. He's going to go down there. Two kills for NIP. Sadak fighting with everything that he's got, trying to stay alive. He cannot, and NIP will claim game number one, but it was certainly close. A lot of moments that could have just slip through their hands. If you don't execute properly at the very end of that, you lose that entire game because of one small mistake. But it's because you see Bonker getting as aggressive as he does, going in on the side and making sure he picks up Ares. Then FRZ got both in the same small corridor with nowhere yeah. to run. It's probably the easiest and best place for him to have picked it up. I think that's a pretty critical moment. I think Bonker was a little bit slow on the uptake. I, think, I believe he was about 6 and 11 as we went into the final round there. All you need is that one or two picks. I mean, yeah. we saw that Splice's performance on Talos. He can be so critical after being quiet all game long. NIP managed just square away game number one. Let's send it back over the desk and keep the set moving. They managed to squeak on by with a win. That was a very close one. Space Station Gaming were looking poised for a victory, but NIP would come out on top there. And, you know, I'm kind of surprised with the Talus pick. It, it, it wasn't... It, it wasn't like the most effective thing in the beginning of the game, right? Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of times where, you know, Pretty Hair and Gore were talking about uh, the, the Talus pick, and you'd see Bonker die as Talus, and you're like, uh, you know, but then it started to, like, rev up here. But let's take a look at the stats and break this game down. I, I think the hardest thing about Talus is, like, it, it, you know, you can say he's got a really bad win rate box wherever you are, but he brings a lot to the team because his overcharge is like a hyper cauterized that lasts for six seconds because you get shot with it once, then you stick it on him, and then he's got overcharge for three more seconds. You know, that keeps people down low, and at the end of the game right there, that last point, Bonker shoved all the way up through their houses, all the way out to the other side, and just made massive amounts of space and plays, and it just, like, gave them the control they needed to secure it out. And that was the only reason I really think they won that fight. Well, I think one of the other reasons why they won that fight was, or won that, won multiple, or excuse me, won this game, was because of Dig, uh, Diggy Dog. This yes. guy was a monster. I, I mean, multiple times clutching it out, uh, getting 4Ks, and near, getting, you know, near wipes, like, bees. This, this dude was slain. He was certainly on fire. The triple kill he got in the houses on the left side was phenomenal. And we see with the morale boost three that he had, he goes from using his ult to getting a triple kill, to 70% back on his ultimate charge already. Yeah. Before the next fight has even begun, he's on 70%. That's a simple fire spear and maybe one one rocket hit. Yeah. And you have your ultimate all over again. So I think the fact that non-stop, non-stop dragon ults are coming through on top of an Inara, like, there's nothing she can do. And to further to the point as well, with the Talus you were saying as well, because he has that innate core rise, he takes the wreck up. He then becomes a counter to both the tanks on the side of SSG. He counters the Fernando shield, and he counters the Inara sustain. Yeah. 
look at that play right there. Throwing down the fire spit and basically displacing everyone. Still getting that, you know, the damage over time and then following up with more kills. And then we didn't even get the seed on that one, but the play against the Fernando. That, was, that, that was Fernando great. thought that he had Diggy Dog yeah. dead to rights, and he just danced around him there like it was nothing. Just uh, the use of the Drogos has really been fun to see all day today. Uh, but where, where did where did Space Station really, I guess, start to fall apart? What, you know, and I want to say fall apart in like a very negative way, but where did it start to go wrong, I should say, toward the end there? See, I, I don't really think anybody did anything like super wrong. Like this is those kind of games where you can watch it back with a microscope and see individual choices that Very just true. costed them the, the point, which is really all it came down is that last point. All the tank ults were spent on that third point conversion and nobody had anything except DPSs left. And when you look at what's on the field, you got Talus ult and you got Drogo's punch. Those things are absolutely huge for making a difference. Yeah, yeah. and I uh, understand. We also have the map for game two here. So this will be Space Station's choice. And we'll see what they go with here as soon as possible. But bees, your thoughts here as we get ready for this next map. Jaguar Falls. The last fish out for Jag Falls. This could be a very interesting one. And again, a very good Talus map, actually. So it could be very possible to see the Talus again. I feel like both of these teams love this map. Like, yeah. you've already got Diggy Dog, like, oh, I can play my blasters all over the place. Yeah. And you just, like, Frozen God's just ready to let me build them. Yeah. yeah. Frozen think, was very impressive uh, at the beginning of that game as that Leanne V starts. I think, uh, especially for this map for, for Nip, it was one of the first maps where we started to see them start to take the, the games against the big boys. Like, the games against Fnatic and stuff, it kind of started originating from Jag Falls. I think it's a very safe pick for them. It's a, a very easy kind of um, draft phase for them. They can play a lot of different champions on this map, and I think they'll come out strong on this one. Yeah, very high potential for them to come out swinging out of the gate for this game here. We're going to get ready for the picks and bans in just a little bit. Uh, but Diggy Dog, man, what a... In the beginning of the game, he was really struggling to be a factor, but then he just started to get comfortable, and I think that just comes with playing on the stage. You've been waiting all day to compete. You kind of got to get warmed up. You got to get the feel for it. And then he just started to make so many yeah. plays. But here come the bans, and Space Station's going to take out Ash. Meanwhile, NIP take out the Makoa. I, I think both teams are just kind of doing what you would view as a little bit standard here. The Ash is not always something that gets banned, though. So I do believe that they have a theory behind banning this out. I don't know if they've been watching Nip's games here, but it's definitely something that you don't always see unless somebody has a plan for it. It's a very niche kind of a tank ban. Yeah, I think especially on this map, if they do get end up taking the Inara, uh, the Ash is the best on this map to contest it. The Barrack doesn't do such a phenomenal job on this map. Uh, if you take something like a Cripple Inara especially onto a Barrack on this map, that Barrack is going to have a very difficult time. You shut down his ability to use his bowling ball from his deck, which gives him the in uh, inherent shield when he dashes away. You take that away from him, he becomes infinitely more squishy. Yeah. The Khan will get and are on one singled out on that one. It will be the last man for NIP. And then the Inara comes in for Space Station Gaming. So, so far, it looks pretty standard in terms of, like, meta picks right now. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is just that Ash Man is just yeah. going to be sitting there and blocking Nip's ability to get it. So it does give them a inherent tank disadvantage here. So it's going to be really interesting what Nip values in this pick. It could be the Drogos, could be a whole bunch of different picks here. There's Ying still on the table, so we'll see what they go with. Maybe just try and uh, prioritize supports a little bit let the get get your picks there because you know that that's where you could potentially win this battle especially if Diggy Dog does what he did in game one but Ruckus is going to get picked up first for NIP. Crunky's actually been playing a phenomenal ruckus on Jack Falls. And uh, Fernando pick coming through as well is a very nice secure. They can actually control both sides of the map here. Fernando can push through into fire, and he has very good control in there with his shield. Whereas Ruckus can now hold the Jack side into dark, where he has a lot of damage. If anyone wants to contest him, he has a lot of burst damage to ensure he can hold it. So I think two very good picks coming out from Nip. What I'm kind of surprised about is no blasters yet. You know, you're kind of just waiting for the right moment to pick it, and neither team prioritizing the Drogos just yet. I'm curious if they're actually going to be picking it here, because it kind of seems this is where you'd want to maybe get them in there. Maybe put your healer here, hold it off for a moment, because maybe both teams are comfortable with the Willow. So they're like, we'll just take the other one if they leave one up. Yeah. I am quite shocked that the SSG didn't pick up the uh, the Drogos there. Since the enemy team has the Fernando, you know if you give them the Fernando ult into the Drogos ult, you're in a lot of trouble 
possible because it, it kind of guarantees that the Drogos can get in, get a kill, and get back out. We've yeah. seen a lot of times the counter to Drogos is killing him either before he hits the ult or as soon as he hits the ult when he's deep in your enemy lines. Um, so with the Fernando ult saves him a lot there. I'm just waiting for this pick. Like, yeah, something curious. big's coming here. So we're just waiting this out. Like, it could be Drogos, it could be another tank. I'm thinking there's the Willow. And what are you grabbing? Lock yeah. It. Lock it down. Lock it. Down. Drogos. Take a Drogos, too. I mean, no, no the Talus. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so they take the Talus, and you both mentioned that this was a good, another good Talus map. It now. is a good Talus map, yeah. And, and again, as we spoke earlier, with the uh, the Talus having innate court rise into his deck, he normally goes into a Wrecker. Uh, Wrecker versus the Ruckus and Fernando is going to be huge for Space Station yeah, games. Yeah, take out the shields. Yeah, and once those two tanks don't have shields, we spoke about this earlier, the same as the Torvald Fernando game we've seen. If your tanks don't have shields, they're kind oh, no! of not tanks anymore. Let's go. We have a triple deeps versus a dredge here. This is this is something that I could not have predicted. You've got dredge, the man. He has only seen one game all land, and it was kind of like a shoe win. All right, let's get it. Picks real quick. Uh, I pick SSG anyway. I stick with him. It was <laughs> it was SSG <laughs> for me as well until the dredge. The oh. dredge is a phenomenal pick on this map. He can hold so much. So I'm I'm going to stick with the guns and nip. Once again, the desk is split. Could be a little bit of that NAEU bias, but we'll find out as we. Get Get ready for game number two. Jaguar falls. We got Gore and Vox. Take it away, fellas. I might not be Vox, but I'd be very excited to have this pirate here in the draft. A 1% pick rate Gormizer, <laughs> and he's just going to whip it out when, you know, everything is on the line. There was no loser's bracket at this event. This is a big game for NIP. Numbers definitely seem skewed when it's the 1% pick, the 100% win rate. Like, the one game he had, he did phenomenally on, and I'm really excited to see NIP pilot this, because this is going to be the first time on the world stage we get to see it, not outside yeah. of placements, so this is going to be intense from them, but I'm still looking at that Talus matchup because this is not only Absolutely. a good map for him, but I mean, you get Wrecker and Ruckus has pretty much nowhere to go. Two very, very shield dependent tanks that have to square off against Ares' Talus, but it's all about Nicky Dog's Dredge here. One of the best blasters in the business on the brand new blaster himself. Or talk to us about this loadout and this talent selection. I mean, a lot of it you're going to be looking at Heave Away. Broadside being able to increase your reload speed. He's looking to spam. He is going to throw out as many grenades as he possibly can. And a lot of this will thwart an Anara standing on the point. And that is exactly where he's going to be aiming. There's no reason to look anywhere else except maybe to the side occasionally. Make sure no one sneaks up on him. But there's nowhere for SSG to feel safe on this objective. Okay, Kronzi buys the first blood on Ares. Diggy Dog knows he's going to be feeling some heat. So every once in a while, you're just going to see him toss these broadsides out. Make sure he's all clear. He can even throw his reload projectile. That's what you're seeing. Every time you see the 1,000 damage, that's when this champion reloads. He Ooh. launches a projectile somewhat like Maldamba, except this one explodes. There's 1,000 damage, zero fall off as well. So if you get hit, you get hit. And with the way he's playing it as well, I mean, we're seeing a lot of direct connects, which is something that you don't get as often. I feel like, again, Jaguar falls in air corridors. People are forced to funnel in towards you. You can do it in there. You're going to see him just portal on out of there, staying safe, as well as the rest of the team. The point is completely in their control, and they're going to take the first one of the map. I mean, it's a surprise factor, right? I mean, we know this character just absolutely pukes damage out onto the map. Every single place you could ever look. And the cool thing about this, this loadout and this style is that it is all centered around this reload. Reloading quickly, you can see he's got his 40% from his loadout, but he's also buying depth yep. cans here. So he's just looking to be constantly throwing out the pressure. In the back line a little bit, though, maybe uh, flip the tables a little bit too much there. I don't know how he's going to be able to wander his way out of this one safely. I mean, he's effectively doubled the amount of champions that it's OK to buy Deft Hands on if you are playing Maldamba. <laughs> you know, it's still murky waters for you, but you can go for it. But being able to come in, again, being able to spam that, it's 1,000 damage every single time that reload projectile hits. And that's going to hit multiple people. But you have to be alive for it, like you said. If you get caught out, you don't really have movement speed. If your portal not prepared for you, you are going to go down. So Dicky Dog has to kind of have his team keep the shell around him to allow him to get all that damage off. You can see the ultimate, the Kraken is ready. I don't believe that we have actually seen a competitive Kraken landed yet because it is very, very difficult. It's an <laughs> extremely long windup. But that's because the payoff is 4,000 damage. Nearly enough to one tap almost any character in the game. Some of these front lines will be able to shrug it off, but they're not going to be feeling so good after that one, Mr. Stark. One minute left on the clock. Kills coming through for SSG. And you 
uh, anticipate this struggle on this Talus to last, or will he start to pick it up like Bonker did in actually game number one? I feel like it's going to pick up for not just Talus, but the entirety of Space Station gaming, because one of the biggest things coming into this, especially at the very beginning, is one game of Dredge was played. Space Station wasn't in that game. Like, they've never gotten right. to play against, except maybe in scrims, but even then, it's a different environment. You're on the stage, maybe a little bit more nerves. That first point, that first capture goes to NIP handedly because of this Dredge, but as they learn to play against it, as they learn what NIP are doing, they're going to adapt, and you're going to see Talus as well as the Cassie and the Willow start to put pressure on NIP in their weak spots. 27 seconds left, and uh, the car has not really left the nope. station here. Just now getting rolling this payload for Ninjas and Pajamas. Captured, but not really pushed. Now that, there is actually some drags coming through. Should be able to get this one rolling, but not very much time left on the clock here. Not a very staggered kill on Minara either. The final 10 seconds means that most of this push will have to happen in overtime if it happens at all. Most of the push that you would see ever in overtime is about this archway that you kind of see Ninjas and Pajamas pushing up to right now. Right there, that would be 30% where they were, or away from where they were when they finally go into overtime. They're going to hit it, but this push, once it transitions from a dirt road to a paved road, becomes one of the most difficult to try and close through overtime. The longer it ticks through, the faster it will go down. So Space Station gives us some picks. It's going to open up a lot more, but Sadat goes down. Mid out goes down. They're finding kills for NIP. This Sadak on Cassie, something we haven't even really been able to touch on yet here. Kick Grunty finds two, looking for his third. Diggy Dog will take it away. FRZ God trying to stabilize his team here. They have to switch ground with NIP here, taking a very risky maneuver, just trying to buy time, if at all possible here. This stall will be what saves the round for SSG. All you need is just a little bit of space. There's going to be a hex of fire, and Cassie's just looking to pelt into him, but that's going to be two big kills. Sadak coming through big for his team, but there's still an IP around. You still have to find these kills. You still have to come through, and that's going to be a big Kraken, but it only finds Rich out. There it is, and Space Station Gaming will defend successfully. And let's talk about that, because we blazed right over at the start. Sadak is on Gassi this game. Never before seen damage on the big stage <laughs> from the big man himself. He takes a big roll swap here. SSG just go for that 3 DPS pop. It's the transition that he's made, right? So we typically see him playing a front line, typically as the off front line, like the ruckus style player. But one of the things that SSG did, like they brought him in initially as their coach, right? He's going to come in, he's helping with the draft, things are going smooth for him. He gets to play during placement rounds, which is either great or bad. This seems like a pick that would work perfect for Space Station Gaming if Aspexy was here, because it's just a shoe in for him. He's perfect on the Cassie. We haven't gotten in, pretty much any experience as the Doc, like even when he was playing in the PGS and Lat Am, never did he really venture onto this Cassie. So picking it up, going for this 3 DPS, his performance will make a big difference in this. A lot of big item selections coming through here for SSG as well. Everyone's got record two online for the DPS. There it is. Illusory Rip comes out as well. Look at this health pouring in from Ying. A lot of broadsides going out. Diggy Dog finds the burst damage. He's getting flanked right now. It's a four for one in favor of SSG. Brazil bringing the thunder in round number two. And Ares finally coming online. The wrecker, once it gets going for Talus, that matchup between Ruckus becomes so easy. And once you can get through him, every single member of NIP, NIP becomes a target being able to come through. Dredge is no longer safe. Leon's no longer safe. You're, you're Maldamba, no longer safe. Like every single member, except maybe Fernando, is going to be an easy kill for him. So Ares being able to play this properly and perfect rune of travel placements as well have kept him going very strong. That's a big part of it. Here's a little 1v1 dance, dance, dance here. Vitalis will just back off of that one. These records are going to be so critical. It's, again, double shielding front line coming out for NIP, so they are very susceptible to the records, and they are coming out in full force here from SSG. Diggy Dog manages to find two, answers it back, just trying to body block oh. this Inara, and that's just the, what happens at this level of play. He's just trying to keep this Inara staggered from his enemy team as long as humanly possible without actually doing any damage or just trying to block her and prevent her from jumping off the map and getting that reset. And then you get these moments as well, like when it's all of a sudden really easy to pick off Sadak or Ares because who's going to protect them? The Inara? The Inara is dead. You don't really have enough healing throughput to keep up with that unless you're going to pop an illusory rift, which they, which they don't have. So there's so many tools that are not in their kit. And I mean, we were talking about NIP not really being able to make it that far. Space Station Gaming's payload is yeah, sitting is pretty much right on where it spawned. So defense is coming out incredibly strong here on Jaguar Falls. Round zero thrown out of Harpoon. Ares trying to 
get something done here, but it's a double kill for FRZ God that may just catalyze the offense for Space Station Gaming. Make it three, the Willow, the Fay Flight is gonna pay off. Being able to come through, that is one of the biggest ults, but again, you can recharge it relatively quickly. Still have a minute left in the round, but the payload needs to start moving or else you won't get anywhere near as far as you want. They got incredibly close in IP in overtime, but it's not always going to be that simple. And with Dredge being able to kind of pelt just onto the payload, especially once overtime timer starts, it is going to be becoming increasingly difficult if you're Space Station Gaming to deal with this push. 40 seconds now. What can they do? Ultimates ready to be spent. But dancing around with these resources is so incredibly important to the balance of the game. SSG will open things up, spending the first one. Ying's ultimate healing everyone from SSG, trying to keep them alive and sustained. But like we mentioned in game one, that one's fairly quick to charge, so expect to see it used liberally. Hexafire, on the other hand, is going to bring the pain. Unable to find any kills itself, Cake Crunch is going to go down. Which how though does pay for all of that with his life, and with no Anara, again, triple DPS, part of the reason we saw it fall off is there's no one to take the place. Once you cut off their head, they're gone. And Space Station Gaming have no pressure to keep a blight on that payload. Beautiful read there from Diggy Dog. He knows exactly where that runner travel is likely to be. And this is something you can see that Scuttle really brings is that burst damage, right? You're seeing him line up his reloads almost perfectly with just his in-hand attack for a total of 1850 burst damage. Very difficult to deal with there. As we see our beautiful Alex Mendes sit back down at the desk and lock it in. Watching this one away. He's got himself a little snack. I think you all should do the same here. FRZ God is feasting currently on NIP 15 and 5. We're going to take a look at the sign app instant replay as he gets up into the air. He's got the ninjas corralled in the corner here and just drops it. Basically a no-look jump shot here, and it's all but confirmed. And it's all that seedling as well, not being able to find that angle. One of the biggest things to stop Willow from shooting you in Fae Flight is to find cover. But if you can get a nice seedling like he did into a small quarter like that, it is going to just land on every member. And you can see he's got a lot of credits to his name to be able to spend all around, but specifically the Haven to try and stay alive and the Blast Shields to try and help take down Cruncy and Koa whenever needed. This is getting into crunch time. Whoever captures this objective will move on to three points, meaning that they have the chance to close the game if they can get both the capture and the conversion here in this round. No ultimate spent just yet, but that changes as FRZ got takes to the skies once more. But everyone from NIP wisely just gets indoors. One of the best ways to counterplay this Fae flight. Shot's still raining down, but it's just not going to be enough. He's not finding any kills, and that's been make or break. But Cruncy still goes down because he's zoned them right into Ares. Richow, Mitow, all picking up kills, and that is what you want. If you can't find the kills, your team will. You lock them down into two rooms, and because of that now, Space Station Gaming are leading. Beautiful stuff there from Ares. He forces the slither, or else Mel Damba would have just gone flying off the map there. Incredible play from Ares. He's really starting to gain some traction, I feel, in these later rounds. Ruckus is just diving onto the objective, trying to get the touch, but if you blink, you miss the shield cooldown actually used there. That is those late game records starting to have an impact. SSG find three more and the objective. And these end of the capture kills that are coming through are incredibly important for Space Station Gaming. That's going to give them a lot more room on the very beginning of this push. They're going to get so much further than they did last time, so much quicker. And if they can get this just around this corner, set up an offense before NIP can feel comfortable with their defense, they should be able to get themselves at least comfortable for the next two minutes. Looking at some of the ultimates from NIP. We've just got the Kraken online. It hasn't been super impactful so far this game. Do you expect that to change, or is that just one of those ultimates that requires hard setup? I feel like it's not only hard setup, but it's really just going to be used to try and get people away from certain areas, right? If there's a payload that's about to be converted, you throw a Kraken on there, and it either goes in or it stops moving because you just push everyone away from it. Good spell trouble here, and now you see Dredge pour out some damage onto the field. Low mobility means in my opinion, you got to know when to just go toe to toe, right? You're not going to escape there. And I think Diggy Dog is doing a really good job of that. Is when he gets into trouble, sometimes the only way out is through, as this pirate cannot move himself. And he's got the peg leg, right? I mean, no pirate's got great mobility, I think. The old wood leg ain't what it used to be here. NIP holding strong on the defense, though. One minute 18 on the clock here for the Brazilians to try and find a way home. And he's gone for the nimble as well, just to give him some sort of movement speed to try and get out a little bit quicker. But a lot of it is going to be in setup, and a lot of it's going to be in kills. Like you said, the damage numbers are what matters for him. And as of right now, he's finding the kills he needs. A minute still left on the clock, but NIP are pretty much right at the middle of the map, pushing even further back. So Space Station are going to have to win essentially two fights just to get to the payload. Thank you.
This has been very strange to see every team that has captured in their respective rounds have just been basically just nowhere near the payload. They have been hard stuff very early on in their offenses and haven't been able to actually get anything going until the final minute of the round, which still isn't even the case for Space Station this time around. I feel like it's, at this point, they're nervous, right? This is going to be probably a 3-3. Nobody wants to really spend any else. Nobody wants to get anything going at this point in the round. Do you agree? Especially with Space Station gaming, right? If you commit any of your ults, like you're going into a 3-3 with no ults. Or if you commit too hard, if your Inara gets caught out, or even just one of your damage gets caught out, you lose pretty much all of your pushing power. You might as well take it slow, see what you can get, maybe try to force anything that you can out of NIP. But at this rate, I don't know if you can force anything out of NIP. They're the ones finding the kills. Yeah, I mean, this has been very just kind of bloody on both sides, and it will kind of conclude in silence here. NIP defense successfully. It's just a couple more kills coming through when it's all said and done but at the end of the day basically every ultimate is going to be available and who you give to the edge to given that all 10 of the most important resources are online i have to say space station gaming i think faith light can provide just enough that it corrals everybody either into the rest of the team or it's just going to give frz god free reign of the sky if that comes through if you see aries and Merchow respond to it properly if you see the damage applied where it needs to and maybe sadat get a couple kills to make that 510 slash line look a little better then it swings heavily in their favor but it is that 510 slash line versus the 20 and 8 on Diggy Dog that yeah. is really making the big difference here. I gotta be honest, I didn't see Dredge going 20 and 8 in this game. I think the <laughs> first time we see a 3 DPS comp in months comes out from SSG. You feel like a low mobility character is gonna struggle a little bit, but Diggy Dog has definitely been really good about kind of watching his own ass, in my opinion. There really isn't a lot of time for his frontliners to feel. Inara is just basically hard parked on the objective, so has to be contested out by Fernando, and Ruckus is more concerned about doing damage than he is providing fuel. And with that said, Kate Cruncy will be the first one to fall in the most pivotal round of this set. And this initial zone, this fade flight, it's so important because Anaris is going to stand on the point. You can see that 50% already picked up for Space Station Gaming. There's no comeback mechanic for either team. This is just going to be capture as best as you can. You have to hold on to it. The best team will win. And with the kills coming out, NIP don't have anyone to fight back. They're sending Bonker in alone. All they have is this Kraken from Diggy Dog. Can the import from Australia clutch this? up 96% for Brazil. Front lines are on the objective. It's time to release the Kraken. No damage is found here, and Diggy Dog will fall flat on his face. The wall goes up, and Brazil tie the set one to one. And so much of that is going right for them. They <laughs> play so everything the way they need to, but I mean, it comes down to like Dredge is doing so great, <laughs> but Kraken can't confirm anything. There's so much like just staggered towards the end that NIP didn't have the pressure they needed. Oh man, I tried my best to set up this great <laughs> moment and Diggy whiffs the crack and it just ragdolls flat onto the objective. That was a really, really funny moment there. I love it from SSG. They are not backing down without a fight. We got ourselves a set. Yes. Tell us what you thought of game two. Thank you so much there. Pretty hair. Okay, I just want to make sure we get that one uh, out there. But you know, if I'm being honest, a pretty bad Vox impression. Like, like really, really bad. Uh, anyway, welcome back to the desk, everyone. Goldemore here, along with Bidey and Bees, and the Borker's very happy. Borker's shaking. Uh, okay, so <laughs> firstly, I uh, want to talk about that final moment there, because that was genuinely hilarious. There's a lot so, of hype. He's coming in, he's going to release this, this, and he's dead. <laughs> it's just too easy for the NAR to dodge it as well. She just casually stepped to the side Anybody and avoided all the damage. Yeah. Oh, it was bad. Man. Well, you know what, though? It was a, a, a good composition choice, uh, you know, going with that three DPS. I mean, interesting. I, and let's take a look at the stats here uh, real quick here. But, I mean, overall, I mean, this SSG, very... I'm, 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 I'm impressed with this team because they dig deep so much. And the Talus pickup, I thought was going to backfire on them, honestly. I thought the Talus, you, you're saying no. Yeah, you're, no. you're telling like, me that. Uh, you're looking at the ruckus. Like, when you have a Talus on the field and you're, like, playing that tank, yep. I hate fighting a Talus. Like, you can look at both of these things. They're going to have a hard time. Like, once he gets up to that record three, like, their entire point fight just falls apart because Anara's just going to sit there for free. And any time a tank can test, Talus can just move in 
he can put down the nano shield if he wants to ult them. He's got so many different tools mm. to just break shields and make space. And Ares, there was a moment where he actually pressed the Damba and managed to time it just right, and he dodged right out of it. And the, the Damba all just whiffed on nothing. Yeah. Like, those are the kind of plays that Talus brings out, not to mention his ult just jumping into the back line at the end there. He yeah. killed the Nando right as he spawned. But why haven't we seen Talus play more than these if, 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 until today? He's very situational. He's uh, a champion that the person has to be very comfortable playing. If you're not comfortable playing the Talus, you, you're not going to perform well on him. And uh, he's very map dependent. He's very draft dependent. He's a hard pick to pull out, but he's one of those ones that in the right situation, he's phenomenal. And I think, as we said, in the, the Bright Marsh and this game, Jack Falls in this one, they were both really good. Um, he both countered uh, both the tanks out, so I think it was just a fantastic pickup, especially for this round for them. Well, you're still series MVP. Let's see who's it going to be. Drum roll, please. And it is FRZ God on the Willow. 112,000 damage, and then you had that 3.4 KDA FRZ God was pretty dominant that game. Well, there were a lot of takeaways from that one. FRZ God pretty much owning the skies was definitely something that you have to praise him for. I think his, his ult timing in the games were phenomenal. We've seen a lot of the time in the point fight uh, that Fernando comes in, tries to contest versus the Inara. He gets burst down, his uh, cooldowns are used, and even though everyone on the side of Nip was kind of inside, away from the Willow ult, the Willow ult kind of kept that pressure to say, you've got two choices. You stay inside and let us cap, or you come outside and you're going to die. So I think he did very good plays in that sense with yeah. the ult. Yeah, pick your poison situation Precisely. decided out there. But now uh, we move forward here, tied up one to one, guaranteed game four. Space Station Gaming does not look, even in game one, it, it never has it looked like uh, it was one team's advantage like we saw in the Fnatic game, like we saw in the Envy game. This is very much going to be, as you guys said, a very hotly contested game. And here's the map. And it will be Stone Keep for map number three. Mighty. This is just one of those veteran maps, you know. Everybody has a plan for Stone Keep because it plays amazingly. And I think what you're going to see is this might just be a 4-3 across the board for every game. Because <laughs> if you look at these defenses, I was taking notes here. You want to know how to defend a point? You want to know how to defend the push? You need to go forward. You need to push them all the way back into their spawn. These games are being decided by the last point fight because both of these teams refuse to give you any space. That last match was like dead zone versus dredge bombs. You know, who's going to come out on top? I think just because of the way that the Willow dead zone works, it gave her a little bit of an edge on that point fight, and they had less tanks, so they got DPS to melt stuff. So what are we going to potentially see here? Uh, any... Any, any champion that they want to try and ban out here early on? Like, what, what are you going to try and target if you're, um, if you're NIP in this situation? If you're NIP, I still feel like taking away the Ruckus is still a good plan for them. Um, I think we've seen Sadak perform well, but still not as powerful a pick as we've seen on, on his Ruckus gameplay. So I think taking that away from them is good. Um, I honestly wouldn't be shocked to try to take away Dredge. I think Dredge is very good on this map again at contesting the uh, castle side. Uh, normally you have like a Drogos doing it, but considering the Jedge is like so new and kind of so different to a lot of other champions in the meta, those that haven't been playing against him find it very rough to play against him. I what? do want to say one thing yeah. about Sadak, and a lot of people might not have noticed on that first point defense, he saved it. He hmm. rolled around on that Cassie and he managed to get these frags while the rest of his team is just dying and he managed to clutch up. So I don't even know if necessarily banning the Ruckus is always the play because what if they triple again? There's a potential, but they won't necessarily have a Nara this time, I think. Well, the Ruckus has been banned and so has the Torvald and a Cassie <laughs> banned. You, were, you and I were Whoa. just having a conversation yes. about this where you said like there are just other things to prioritize other than a, a Cassie ban. And uh, NIP's trying to show you up here, bud. Well, that's number two for the day. Maybe they're trying to force the DAC back onto the Fernando. Thank maybe you. that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to say, right, maybe, yeah, he was good on the Ruckus. He performed on the Cassie. Let's put him back onto the Fernando, something we can deal with very easily. Mm -hmm. And then from their point onwards, probably make it a little bit more of an easier game for themselves. And I, I feel like this is one of those instances where you, I just wish I could hear why Nip banned that. Like, yeah. is it because of Sadak? Because he, he popped off all these games. He's done a really good job. And maybe they are banning just for him. But I, at this point, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I think, uh, like, you can't really 
ban out FRZ God. He's like one of those Bitna characters. Yeah. You can say, let's take away his EV. They put him on something else. I let's take away the other the thing. They put him, like, the he's too difficult to stop from being effective on whatever they give him. Anara and Khan for SSG. Makoa picked up for NIP. And first time we're going to see Khan in action in a little while here. Drogos gets banned. And that definitely is it, it's good for the Anar, right? Like, they take care of the Drogo, so this way the Anar doesn't have to worry about the sky like that or all that much. Lian and Ying locked I, in for NIP. I, I don't know here. I think SSG could maybe pull out the Willow again. Um, Khan strength is that execution-based ult. He's going to grab somebody, and they're going to be in a world of pain. They'll either get killed or he'll die trying to do it. I like this victor here. Um, he's going to be able to sit in the back. Khan's going to be in the front. I'm curious what they're going to end with that pick on SSG. SSG, Maybe I it could be a Willow. I have to say, though, I'm actually not a fan of Khan on this map, considering they're going up against the Makoa. Typically, you want to grab the champions like the tanks to put mm -hmm. off the map. So far, we have the Makoa, who has a very easy escape to get back on. The angles that you would need to grab him from Khan, there's no way you're going to get him off the map so long as his F is available. So maybe they're going to try and grab one of the... The, the damage dealers instead, but I think Khan's very unsafe on this map. Mm -hmm. When he grabs, yeah, that other person is is immobile, but so is the Khan. That's true, that's true. But the Willow and Barrack now are going to be your last picture NIP. Let's see what SSG goes for here. And Click potentially it. the EV. I think the EV with the Khan pairing would give her extra CC and that damage boost to look for. FRZ God is an amazing EV, and I think this is going to be one of those, again, this is going to be an insane game because Victor's going to be prepping the damage, and EV's going to be diving in to try to finish it. Is this yeah. another split down the middle here, guys? Uh, I actually like F uh, SSG's drop now with EV take. Okay, so you're taking SSG. I'll take SSG this round. I never moved. He never he moved. Never he moved. never moved. Well, Bees is a traitor <laughs> to his people. All right, oh, time on. to send it back over yeah, to your casters. This time, it's Pretty Hair and Rain Day. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> Gorizer here and Pretty Hair to bring you game number three. I never vote against EV personally. And when it's FRZ God, I don't really want to vote against his EV. It's just one of those things, again, very much like Ninu. Like, looking at some of these players, they can have game-changing moments when you give right. them certain champions, and I feel like this is one of those classic combinations. It's a really good setup and follow-through opportunity that I think Buddy hit on well, as well as the fact that I, it feels like people have just forgotten how to play Khan, right? You put Khan with someone, he screams, give them the CC immunity, give them the bonus damage, and let the girl go to work. I think this is a really nice strap put together by SSG, but it is going to require execution and everyone doing their part. And controlling the right parts of the map. Stone Key, one of the things about Khan on this map is just where you have to be in order for things to go smoothly for you. It is a yeah. lot more difficult than just plug and play like you would maybe on certain maps. You can't just get an overpowered everywhere. You have to find those right locations. You have to fight for potentially the high ground, strip that away from the Willow and give right. some room to this EV. I think that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing for me. The high ground isn't super important for SSG, but it is very important to take away from Diggy Dog, and they do so very quickly. Just a minute on the clock, and Diggy Dog is already going to be first blood. I'm not even sure Diggy Dog knows what hit him right there. It's, it's going to be these grenades. They do so much damage, and you can do it from such a safe position. Aries is in a perfect spot to be able to just damage down onto the point. But it was 42% picked up for NIP. Normally, that would make a pretty big difference, but admittedly, Space Station Gaming just wide through everybody on NIP there. Pretty insane start to the match here for Space Station Gaming. Remember, this at this point in the set, it goes to loser's pick. So given that Ninjas in Pajamas lost that previous map, they select Stone Keep. So Space Station Gaming definitely come out strong. It's interesting. Do you think Sadak being added to this roster has any impact on the improvement here on, Splitsta or on uh, Stone Keep? Excuse me. Playstyle-wise, definitely just because he's already been on the main stage before. He's been up in Worlds. He's been to his semifinals. He knows the pressure. He knows how it feels. But it's also just in terms of drafting. The way the control of the game goes, oh potentially losing very early on, could make a big difference. And right now, it's definitely not going their way. Folks, that's why you got to get Willow off of the high ground there. It's just too easy. There is nowhere to hide from that amount of blast damage. 99% though on the objective for Space Station Gaming. NIP are just now getting themselves back up, but they are dug 
in deep. Look at that. The hook goes out on a freeze god. And they don't even need the pull. They just managed to get it off the stun. The small little half second stun that Dredge Anchor actually provides to you. Here comes a fade flight from Diggy Dog just to keep everyone on their toes. But I think NIP got this one locked down. Diggy Dog's up in the air and he is just raining hell from above. There's going to be some good healing though coming down from Space Station Gaming. They're still on the point. They're still alive, but only for so long. They get taken down. Rachel falls and now the rest of the damage coming oh, out. Man. Diggy Dog on this map makes Willow work. And this time around, he's going to show you why. He doesn't have the Torvald bubble, but he's still making it go. That's a big thing that you hit on there. He does not have the Torvald. You're right. And that's one of the most insane combinations that we have seen on Stone Keep. I mean, NIP absolutely just embarrassed their opponents when they got it. But just knowing those alternate routes, right? Knowing what to do when I'm not on that little balcony just shooting down. I think he really got acquainted with the rest of the map during that game. And I think that is going to bleed into his performance on these offenses and defenses. And you roll back to the summer split towards the end of it. This is one of the maps that we started seeing Fnatic pull out the willow. Like when she was first starting to emerge, this is one of the maps that she did excellent on. And it's just because of when you look down, you really do just get a 2D version of the map. You get to drop your bombs pretty much wherever you want. You are playing a defensive game at that point, and you can just kill off anyone who happens to be in a place you don't like. And it gives you so much pressure. Charging that up, keeping Diggy Dog alive, and letting him play the way he wants to is going to just spread destruction through Space Station Gaming. Ancient Rage is going to come out. A lot of ultimates being popped right now. It's a loser to Rift, Red Serpent, and the Ancient Raids. When it's all said and done, it's a two for one in favor of NIP. FRZ got us looking to even the score, but Diggy Dog reads where he's going to wormhole back to and continuing to put pressure on this Eevee. So much burst damage, there's nowhere to go but home for FRC guys. And now up and over, he's going to be able to find the Fae Flight. Barrage can connect with him, but he's just playing this angle perfectly so that no one is going to be able to lock him down. He's finding the kills, the damage, and everything's good for him. There it is, 50 seconds on the clock here. Three kills, looking for even more here. NIP might be able to find their fourth. Do they even need it at this point? Is the round too far gone? FRC God dies in the background. You've got Diggy Dog just locking down spawn that payload rolls right home that was the fastest 180 i think i've ever seen a game that take was. like that is space station gaming's game the entirety of the first half of that capture point and then it is just diggy dog finding kills getting up to the high ground then a fey flight and that just spreads ruin throughout space station gaming they didn't know how to target him they don't really have anyone to directly take him out of the air and if he can get just another performance like that they're going to be able to clean up this map I mean, this first blood comes through so quickly. It feels like back-to-back -back grenades was enough to do it. And my question is now, if they can't get that almost surprise first blood, what chance do SSG stand? What is the play? What's the plan? I mean, they're still going to have to focus down Diggy Dog, but they're going to have to deal with Bonker as well. It's one of those things, Diggy Dog is going to take precedent, but you always have that silent damage coming from behind. We had mentioned Cassie earlier as a distraction factor. Like, if no one's looking at Cassie, she's just going to be able to get a bunch of damage off. The same thing's going to go for Leon here, and Ares is going to have to make sure that Barrage, when it comes online, finds a kill. Making sure that he keeps this pressure on Victor High. Forces out the Dome Shield nice and early, but it's Diggy Dog winning the fight without pressure placed on him. Diggy Dog finds Sadak. Rashao answers back, finally taking down Koa. It's a one for one, front line for front line. But at the end of the day, SSG will mosey their way on down to the objective. FRZ got his caught hiding in the corner. Double kill for Bonker on Leon, one of his strongest characters in the book. And being able to find these kills, roll them out. Once you get rid of Victor, all of a sudden, you're going to see Diggy Dog have no one who is going to look up into the air. Maybe you have a little bit of con pressure, but it's not going to be enough damage especially at that range to deal with them. So they just get everything they need early on. If FRZ God isn't around and you lose your victor, then you lose all your pressure. It doesn't matter what front lines you have. It doesn't matter how long you can stand on the point. They're the ones that are driving this show for Space Station. There it is. 96% on the objective. Ninjas in pajamas here, taking things back. Diggy Dog finds 2K. Gruncy puts one in the book as well. Sadak trying to keep the pressure high, but he goes down. And I think with him, the hopes for a capture here in this second round. NIP, get on the objective. There it is. NIP will take this payload and try and begin the offense and might actually look for the 4-0 here on Stone Keep. And timing again is just so crucial there because FRZ God is about to blink on, try to get some overtime. It might not make a big difference in the grand scheme of the game, but he's He's almost there and they force the ice block immediately. Like they just stall him as long as they possibly can. So NIP are doing perfect in their target acquisition. And as long as they keep that kind of pressure up all around the board, again, it just makes it so much easier for a person like Diggy Dog to make Willow look good.
much of this do you think is just the, the anti-heal that's online from, from minute one for NIP? I mean, they have the dead zone and the death and taxes. I mean, with death and taxes alone, you're going to stop pretty much all, not necessarily all healing, it's 90%, but it's still Damn enough close. to cause a lot of trouble, especially for just a lonely Maldama. If you have Ying on the other side, maybe things go the way of Space Station gaming, but that dead zone changes fights. I'll be honest, it's it's kind of about Ares for me this game, and, and that's really one of the first times I'm actually saying that. Normally it's FRZ God kind of blowing our socks off, but he has struggled here, not even beating his tank in damage. It's all about Ares at the moment. Is this less of the one-two punch happening? Are these players trying to play too much on their own? I feel like we're also, I mean, not just seeing them maybe play too much on their own, but maybe not go for the same style of play that we've seen find success for this champion. Like, Victor is normally top of the damage charts by a large margin. He is normally at least 40,000 damage ahead. The fact that he is sitting in the pack at all is just not a good sign for Ares. And it feels like NIP have recognized that. He is a big threat. You get rid of him, you get rid of grenade pressure, and all of a sudden it's a lot easier to deal with Space Station Gaming. There it is, Sadak back to the wall here. Diggy Dog will take down Rochelle right in front of him. He just has to watch his friend bleed out. The Fate Flight has popped here. Nice little angle taken, forcing Ares back in the spawn. It feels like just rinse and repeat here for NIP. They get the Khan, Makoa, the Willow, everything they need to succeed here on Stone Keep. And Ares is so distracted. Diggy Dog has done such a good job of holding this spawn down. He may have just given his team the chance, but SSG aren't out of it yet. They find two kills before it's all said and done. I mean, you can just go ahead and queue up Deja Vu. This seems like almost exactly the same round we just saw, though now the barrage coming through some good damage from Ares. A kill right there could make a difference for Space Station in trying to stop this. 13 seconds left, but a couple of kills have staggered out the respawn timers. That Ooh. could buy them the round and at least get them alive in this game. Incredible stuff there. I mean, Ares, huge stabilization effort. FRZ God, he needs to start connecting on some big shots for sure. Uh, I, I always tout EB as a little bit of a late game character, especially once you get that caught three online, just from personal experience, it feels so much easier to actually do your own thing. You don't need that big to set up your kills for you. You can safely confirm your own stuff once you shut down the healing all on your own. I think a lot's gonna fall down to use a barrage, but also just seeing FRZ God being able to survive on his own, right? Being able to go a different route than the rest of his team, not get picked off, but be able to find at least one kill on that route because he's three and seven. It is not a good look for the Eevee. It's not the way you want to see it going through. And with combined healing, you're barely seeing a keep up from right. this Maldamba as well as this Khan in terms of what Bird is putting out on the Ying. So there's a lot of avenues that you have to see Space Station Gaming start to go. And right now it's nine. 2 credits. Yeah. Zephyr Z God's going to buy that last, I believe, tier 3 God Rocks. Right. That's why he's waiting there in the spawn. Passive credit income will get him to 900, the magical number for buying your level 3 offensive items. 3 to 1 lead here for NIP. Eevee noticeably struggling. Not a lot of easy matchups for her, though, in my eyes. I mean, Leon is going to immediately start putting pressure on you the minute you go through. That's why she's such a good target to try and get rid of early on, but you need these shots to connect. And finally, FRZ God is going to be able to close that through. He's still alive, but Diggy Dog doesn't go without anything being answered. Rachel is taken down, so the point fight's still even. Have to be worried about this Makoa at all times as well. Freeze God manages to find Koa. He's into his ice block. He's out of his ice block. Pressure finally coming through for SSG. Now pushing this Makoa down inside of the gatehouse. They will find the kill. The battle shout keeps Khan alive for just a few seconds longer. Doing a good job buying time. Look at this. Diggy Dog just cannot find a way to get this kill. Visible frustration there from the Australian as he goes down inside of the gatehouse. Mirage dropped on the point. SSG, they're not out of it yet. Come back mechanic working its wonders and the double kill for Ares is going to open up so much, but Makoa is here and Makoa is ready to try and fight. A nice wall's going to keep him zoned out though. He can't even put his foot down, and that's going to be SSG capturing the point. Clean stuff there from SSG. That's what I like seeing out of these guys, though. Resilience. They're down 3-1. They're getting spawn camped in the previous round. You wouldn't really be able to tell. They come out swinging. They come out with a different game plan. They execute much better that round, and they're able to put themselves on the offense here, not with a chance to win, but with a chance to tie it up 3-3. Three three. And that's why we will see ults charged up, maybe used early on in this round as well, if they want to get a little bit of control. But towards the end of the round, it's going to become a bigger risk going into a 3-3 three three tie, especially with how close these last couple games have been. Kills like that are going to matter. Bonker has to find something out of there, or else it's just going to be all S. 
SSG all the time. Oh, look at this. Barrick in a bit of a situation here. He could be capitalized on Blink's coming up in a couple of seconds, and, and he's just not effective from this area of the map. He's just dancing around, popping his shields, trying to stay alive for as long as he can, but what did he really accomplish? Big heal on the Freeze God as well, in and out of the ice block. SSG, this is what's big about this moment right now. They're not having to pop ultimates to get this critical choke point broken on this map. They may be able to tie this up without having to spend a single damn thing. And not only that, but we're finally seeing FRZ got live up to the EV play that we were giving him <laughs> earlier on. Being able to show up, find these kills, find that pressure, have that rhythm that you need in order to make sure EV works, especially when you have Damage. mirages falling from the air. This is exactly what you need to try and push this in. Oh, Sadak just sticks to his guns there, and he'll go down swinging SSG tied up. I mean, I love what I'm seeing right now. Tied it all up three to three here. This is not going anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. So far, I got to say the most competitive set that we have seen today. The Brazilians do not want to exit this tournament early. They are the only international hope remaining. I mean, when it comes down to it, this point fight has gone to both teams. They have both been able to fight this dance. So far, NIP have been the ones that have controlled it when things are even. The comeback mechanic worked wonders there, being able to at least give SSG the chance they need. Although, at the end of the day, they might not have needed it. They had a pretty solid hold towards that 99%. And if they can get a start like they had last time, then it's going to swing things back in their favor. Three. Getting pretty hot here. 19 streak for the Winter Witch. Hopefully she doesn't melt before it's all said and done, though. Just need one more good round out of her. Barrage was used there by SSG down the stretch, but that's a pretty quick charging ultimate. They still have their heavy hitters, though, the overpower and things of the like. Early Dome Shield is forced out here. Freeze God on a 19 streak, being very, very careful about how he approaches. Diggy Dog, he's overpowered into the Cathedral, and he will be the first to fall in the final round. And that's going to open up so much. Dread Serpent comes through, and that's going to set up some kills. Ancient Rage has been popped, and the damage is so good, but it's not enough to find a kill just Call yet. Chao is the one who goes down, but Bonker gets traded out. Call it out, my guy. FRZ God finds one, finds two. He's looking for three. 17 years old, can he remain cool on the biggest stage of his life? Dead zone, anti-heal, blinks back into trouble, but he gets the ice block, soars up to the high ground and lets his teammates finish it. SSG are looking good. They'll take map control, but NIP far from out of this. They still have Fae Flight, and they have 42% already captured. And Fae Flight, Diggy Dog, the combo on this map can mean so much, and when he uses it, how he uses it, and whether or not he can find just one kill, I think is going to make the biggest difference right here. He's going to have to go up in the air soon, though, because that's 81% still rising for Space oh, Station. No. The barrage is coming through, so the kills are being looked at for SSG. There it is. Two for nothing so far. Ares is on the run. Diggy Dog is up. He's trying yet again to clutch up for his team. He's on Willow this time, not Dredge. Finding one more shot around the corner, but he just can't get it done. Mittal stayed alive for one more shot than I think he counted on, and SSG pull this set back two in a row for Brazil. Everything so close towards the tail end. I mean, you get that kill just a second earlier and maybe Diggy Dog can turn around, start looking elsewhere, but he's locked in that corner. Then he yeah, just unfortunately dashes right into the wall. Nowhere for him to really go. He's left alone, like you had said. And we saw what happened on Dredge. We've seen now what happens <laughs> on Willow. Both time it's flopping face first onto the point. I mean, it's really, really close here, folks, in our final PC set of the day. NIP versus SSG are cooking up something special here for you. And we will have at least one more game guaranteed, but I saw visible frustration at one point on yeah. Diggy Dog's face. They have to to remain cool. SSG did. I mean, they were certainly on the ropes there, but incredible bounce back from the Brazilians. We're going to send it back over to the desk and keep this set rolling. Thank you so much, fellas. Wow, what a series this has been. Space Station workers going crazy. Oh, man. I don't I don't even know, like, what, like, what, what was that? Like, it, it, okay, just for, just so everyone is aware, SSG were being spawn camped at one point in time, completely forced inside of their base. Bitey, enough of the miming. Oh. Your thoughts? <laughs> well, let me tell you, like, <laughs> like, a Willow is really effective. No matter what you do with her, I think Diggy Dog's playstyle is perfect for it. Um, you just look at, like, any time they get an advantage, Willow is usually thought of like being, you know, in the back, doing the dead zone, doing my own thing. But Diggy Dog adds in this like, all right, time to go. Let's run in. And then he just starts fragging out. Uh, and you can see that pushed him up to the three-point advantage. Where things start turning is when SSG adapted. 
How, and, and how was that though? Like, what did they do to change it? Well, I think it just, just kind of like changed out of nowhere. Yeah, the, the damage started coming out a lot more consistently onto the targets they needed to come out to. Uh, the barrack was falling relatively early on the point. The barrack was basically every single point as well was forced to use his ultimate just to survive. I mean, when you're in a situation where you need to have one of the slowest charging ults in the game just to live on the point, you know you're going to be in trouble. Well, here are the post-game stats, and Ares had a huge, uh, huge game, but also the real, to me, the, the, the star of that one was FRZ God. Just at the end of that, really putting so much pressure as that EV. There was a whole fight where the barrack was completely isolated. Kawa had no idea what to do because it was just getting peppered with shots from the EV and could not get away, ultimately falling there and being just a non-factor in that fight. But here's the MVP, and it is going to go to Ares. You know, he did do a majority of the damage that game, 120,000. He did have some pretty big moments, and yeah. I, I, think, I think it's deserving. Oh, I mean, for sure. The headshots coming out from him on the victory were phenomenal. He was flicking between characters, and even still, he was dinging the headshots nonstop. Like, the damage he was putting out was phenomenal for his team, and that just makes Evie's job so easy. Yeah. When there's like four low health targets, all Evie has to do is blink in and pop one shot on each of them, and it's guaranteed kills. Yeah. I, I think the biggest adaptation, too, is like they physically changed their rollouts. At the start, they were going towards the right side, towards Keep, and really trying to brawl out against this McCohen position over there. And it just like they weren't working. So they switched up their sides and started focusing on that church fight. And you can just see, like, it really worked out for them. The Khan would pull the guy in, he'd get beat up and get dropped, and then Willow's forced to go inside of the church, which is pretty dangerous, especially with a victor who's just looking for her to come in. Yeah, the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same result. So yeah. it's a good thing that SSG aren't crazy because they ended up nailing that second or that third game, excuse me, and now they're going to go up two to one in this series one step closer. Is this the first Wait. set now to hit the fourth game? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I think we had one other. Yes. We had one other go to game four. Uh, VP, 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 VP Navi. Set. VP so Navi. The, the second game of the day has gone to the fourth set. This isn't just any set, though. This is all 3-3 three, three back and forth. Like, yes. you need to give it to both of these teams. Like, they are playing their minds out. And it's literally the smallest plays are determining the biggest odds here. And there's nobody really at fault for making a bad mistake. It's all hindsight 2020 type of, oh, I should have gone left instead of right. Yeah. What I find so wild about the end there, especially when FRZ got was, like, you know, contesting on point, it was like, just the movement, man. The movement was insane. Like, just flying around this map makes it so difficult. It's very clear that this EV FRZ god, just this combination is just very, very dangerous. And you got to make sure you clean that floor nice and pretty. Yeah, you can tell he has a very deep understanding of the game. You can see yes. in the decision making yes. that he has and the, and the plays that he makes, he's not going in just on a whim. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants Everything's to achieve. Everything's calculated. He's precisely. And he's achieving it to the standard that he needs to, to, to put his team through. Yeah, well, we're going to find out what map two or map four, excuse me, is in just a little bit. Can NIP get two on the board? That's the question here. Where do you think they're going to go? I, I think it's kind of hard to predict because everybody's picking these, you know, standard maps and they have been slobber knockers just going back and forth with all these frags in place. These two teams are aggressively defending. That's a very rare treat to see. Nobody wants to give an inch. Nobody wants to give any space. And I, I really just feel like any map that they go to is probably going to be hotly contested unless we got some kind of crazy draft coming out. Um, I'd actually like to see them take it to Frozen Guard. I think in a Frozen Guard, uh, Nip are very good on this map. And it's also one of these kind of maps that you can shut down the enemy team from getting back onto the point very easily. So they go for compositions that can wipe Space Station Gaming, go for the aggressive zones, keep them off the point. I think that's something Nip is very good at on that map specifically. And I think it'd be a good map for them to take now to, to even out the score. I think the only danger I see with Frozen is that SSG is like showing that they can do the exact same diff, uh, type of play. They've got the talent.
Dallas, they've got the EV. I think it's kind of like who gets the advantage in draft. It's for really sure. the it's deciding sure. factor here. Do you try and be creative in your map choice, or do you go with a maybe safer option? Maybe, you know, I think Frog right now something. the safe option is the, but then if that's what I mean, Frozen God for them, for me, is the safe, is the safe option. option. That for them, if for Nip, they're very good on that map specifically. So I think for them, that is a safe option, whilst kind of almost simultaneously maybe making it a little bit more difficult for Space Station. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So we're going to find out what this map is in just a little bit. I'm very curious about that as well. For those of you watching at home, I was informed by the people in the back that when we did Space Whales in the chat, we actually broke the chat. So you know what that means, guys. More whales. You gotta do it again. That's right. Space whales in the chat. Yes. So I, I gotta look at make sure real quick because I need. Yes, I'm seeing oh. it, <laughs> dude. The space whales are so many. It's actually it's funny when I say it, like, dude, the space whales. Like it sounds sounds really sounds really bad. Look at uh, all those whales. Yeah, man. man so many space whales. So yes, if you're in the chat right now and you have 2,000 sparks to spare, apparently the first one's on mixer. You might as well just go ahead spam some space whales. This is the best thing ever. I, I like, you know, I typically latch on to something whenever I join certain streams. This is what I've latched on to. Space, space whales. whales. Your whales? There are so many space whales being spammed right now. And I see the whales actually. It's, this is great. We're, we're, we're destroying it. This is, this is what we want. We're giving Mixer a good stress test here, people. Space whales in the chat. All right. Look at that. Stop well, the home of the space whale, Serpent Beach. I don't know. I just made that one up. <laughs> it's going to be map number four. Uh, uh, all right, gentlemen, thoughts on this one, Bitey. Well, this is a very generic map because everybody loves a good old Serpent Beach. You know, you go out to your backyard, you play a game, that's on Serpent Beach, that's where it is. It's been played three years running. It's an amazing map. It's got everything open for you. You can snipe, you can spam, you can flank. And it used to be bright, now it's a dark map. You know, the sun yeah. used to be up, it's finally down. I'm really curious, like it's all gonna be draft I'm, and then gameplay. I'm, I'm curious about what your backyard is because if your backyard looks like Serpent Peach, Oh, I mean, you want to know what my front yard move. is? What? Timber Mill. Timber, of course, it's Timber Mill, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that the trees are so close to the beach. It's very, you just don't really, geographically speaking, doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, Bidey, you, you live in a world of feelings, not facts. So that's <laughs> where we're going to get. Am I be good about that? <laughs> okay, so, uh, Bees, what about you, bud? How do you feel about this Serpent Beach? Uh, I have to agree with Bidey. It's a very kind of standard generic map coming out from both teams. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> but it's a, it's a map that everybody's comfortable on. Yeah. It's not a map that's going to be an upset for any specific team. And so this is definitely going to be one of those maps where it just literally comes down to who comes out on the better draft and the better players. You oh. think it's going to be a 3-3 again? I hope it's a 3-3 again. I think it'll be a 3-3. I would probably agree with you guys on that one. I, I know how everything's been going. Yes, 3-3. I want a, a five-set 3-3 three, three, the whole way. The whole way. Through. The whole way. Poor In, Gore Miser over here. Points. You know, he's just, I, I think, I mean, I want to get food. I don't know about you, Gore, but I don't know about you. I want to eat. I'm, I'm, these guys, these, these Paladins players, how dare they? I'm in it for the grind and I'm ready. <laughs> That's right, dude. The grind is real. All right. don't so, on the grind. Torvald and Fernando banned for Space Station Gaming. Makoa eliminated out for NIP. Let's see what they're going to do for their second and final ban here. But the Fernando going. That's that's an interesting one. Instead of the it's Inara. A, it's a new sure one. It's, a one. Um, it's an odd one as well, because now Nip's in a weird position. Do they give them the Inara? Do they give them the Khan? They've shown already they can make Khan work on a map that doesn't favor him. So what are they going to do on a map where it's a little bit easier wow. for Khan to get them into Gibbs? Oh, the EV shut down. They oh, said Emperor Z God. That's a respect ban right there. That is indeed. Look so at they get that. the Khan and he's going straight for the Khan. I mean, why? Why not? Right? You just you're gonna stay alive. You have the uh, the immortality on on point as well. The extra heals, the shield, everything works out for you there. You just gotta go ahead and lock that one down. And NIP, I'm sure that they're gonna lock down the NR. I think as well, Space Station have shown in the last round that they're very capable of using the Khan to uh, to get the damage yeah. players instead of the tank players. As we said this before, we don't know how they're gonna do it. We don't know whether that's the way that they'll they'll prioritize. Yeah. And they were very good at grabbing the damage and killing them fast enough that the Khan was never in trouble. Yeah. So they definitely use the ults in, in smart plays rather than the kind of force plays that we sometimes see when they're like, we have a car ult, we have to use it. And then they just grab the Inara, the Inara gets away and it's just totally wasted. 
Yeah, and I'm just curious, what is this last pick here? A Cassie. So we're leaving up the Ying, and we're going for the jack of all trades, Cassie. She can kill tanks, she can kill flanks, she can kill anything you want. You just got to play it right. And I feel like that's a really safe and sound pick. And especially against the Khan, you know, she's got really good burst. She yep. can just nuke the shield out of the way. She's got cauterized. Plus the CC immunity from her ult as well. Yeah. Typically yeah. used at the start of the round when a Khan wants to use his ult. So that means that now you have two CC immune targets on the side of Nip that the Khan cannot actually ult. Yeah. They're just trying to look for value here. I think SSG again, these are kind of like safe picks, so we don't see what yeah. the flavor pick for both team is yet. You've got Ying with the great ult and the great healing. Leon with that safe and sound cauterize. Really good against flankers in case they pull out something crazy. I I don't know. There could be a sniper here if somebody was feeling hot, but I feel like it's going to be some kind of Talus or other flanker. With the uh, with the Eevee band out, is there really a flank that you would want to take on this map? Maybe an Androxus will work, but besides that, is there much else? Did you know it's Spice it up with Buck. Spice buck. it up with a Buck. Damn. Spice it up send with a big old send Buck. Out Damn. The shotgun Monk. Let's I, do it. I don't know how I feel about that with a Torvald band out. With or Torvald, Grover. Maybe. Or Grover. Grover flanks. Yeah. I like it. Grover flank Land Grover, bro. Land met a Grover flank. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Okay, so Ruckus and Maldama, nothing crazy for NIP, although I like their trap because there's just... There's a lot of reliability, I think, on that side. And then Androxus comes in for Space Station Gaming. They have one more pick. What are they going to go with here? Come on, let's it's going to be nice. the Ash. I like this comp from SSG. Uh, the Andy is an amazing flanker for this particular map. Got a lot of high ground control, mm -hmm. has a lot of mobility, and with the CC immunity from Khan and a little bit of damage boost, you'll see him make some pretty smart plays. And I bet it'll either be, well, I think it'll be frozen on him, but it could be a -Rath. Andrew also very good against the Ruckus. Uh, against Ruckus is all when he uh, throws out all the damage. Yeah, you just chuck up the reversal. You catch all that damage. You chuck it straight back in his face. Yep, just, just full on. Just full. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I would have gotten fired on the spot. The action. Uh, I think I could tell what you were going to say. Yeah, I know. Thanks, thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are of one mind, bud. You were, we're of one mind. All right, and the final pick will be Vivian. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so the Vivian pick here. We saw how effective Vivian could be on Splitstone Quarry. Will it be the same thing here? That is the question. But now, this is it. Is Space Station Gaming going to go on and face off against Envy tomorrow, or will NIP force a game five? Bees, go quick. I'm giving it to my boys, Nip. I want to see the five set the full way. He wants to see the five. Bitey. I've never moved, and I'm not moving yet. Bitey's the immovable. He's going for Space Station Gaming. The death is split yet again. Let's send it over to your casters, Gore and Pretty Hair. Thank you so much, Alex Gormizer. I don't know what that face said to you, Umber, but it, it didn't seem like it was a, a full unanimous agreement on the Vivian pick there down the stretch. It definitely seems like they're putting everything on the line, right? Vivian is going to either go completely right or completely wrong. We saw Mooji Am I off on that read? It, it felt like he was kind of, well, all right, if you guys think that's what we do. If it's the mean, call, you go do. with it. But sometimes it doesn't work out the way they want, and this is not the best map for her, but at the same time, it's a really great map for her. She can't move around a lot. She's very slow, easy to pick off, but it is a just easy pickings on the point, right? You get the signal spot, you just sit there and yeah. rain any sort of damage you want from the balcony. The problem is now, you know, it is two shielding front lines from SSG, but Sadak and Rashao don't look like they're going to be looking to play too hard into that. They picked that into, a, into an Androxus as well. I feel like, you know, Vivian, as champions yeah. go, tends to be one of the more flankable ones. Anker has certainly got his work cut out for him here, ladies and gentlemen. Game four between SSG and Ninjas in pajamas. SSG with a chance to put away the higher favored European seed Ninjas in pajamas. And I think a lot is going to come through. You do get to see this time Ares on the Leon. It is not going to be FRZ God. He is going to be flexing around onto that Androxus. And you can see him in the back. His silhouette as he's dashing around in the back line looking for the kill. And if he can find that Vivian, that's going to make this so much easier. But NIP are sitting on the point. They're in control. They're starting to get control of the enemy high ground as well. A little 1v1. May I have this dance? Leandro finds the first three. Four. Looking for first blood. Cassie backs off. It will still go to SSG. FRZ God looking for the re-engage here. He won't catch anything. Cassie moving in. He's going to put the moves on her. Trying to find these flicks, but just can't get it done. Staying alive all the while. He's going to need help, and he's going to get it. He made Jabated Diggy Dog. Look at the frustration on his face. He knows he got Jabated here. FRZ God, beautiful dance over here on the Sundial side. Pulls him right into the trap and that 87% for NIP. All of a sudden, doesn't seem like it's that much. Headshots galore. If you can find the kill, you'll be able to pick it up, uh -oh. and FRZ God. 
God is starting to get going on this Androx. As it takes a little bit of rhythm, but once you're there, you're ready, and everything is going to be coming up SSG. Ooh, momentum here for FRZ God. Things are landing. The shots, the punch, the peel is good as well. SSG, even without him, right? He was kind of absent for the first minute or so, but his team was still finding a way to get it done. That can't happen. When there's no pressure being applied, it's essentially a 4v5 there. That's the moment that SS or an inch of pajamas have got to strike and find a win. You know how every single time we talk about flanks, or at least with me and Vox, we always tend to mention the fact that, well, it doesn't matter they're not getting killed, they're distracting them. That is just the perfect example. He's just standing over there, like a couple of headshots every now and then, but no big threat coming out of it. Nothing like what you're seeing out of Ares with that shot as he finds the kill. Does still get taken down, but the kills are coming through, and oh. SSG are getting so close to finding a little bit more, but they're still pushing the payload. They're still in control, and they're still making sure NIP are not ready for what they're bringing. They are finding tooth and nail for this. I'm actually really surprised to see them go for that, but, you know, I have a policy where I really don't fault any player for guaranteeing a killing blow with Enlightenment. I think if you, oh, yeah, get, you know, smoke them if you got them, you're getting right back to 50%, and you can resume that pressure. Now, how do Space Station Gaming recover from that loss? I mean, at this point, regroup. Probably not Wait like around. That, huh? Definitely not using your assert dominance. I don't know if you want to do this alone. Rachao is up here. He's used his ult. And yeah, you're going to get a little bit of pressure, but I feel like you really want your Androxes. You want someone behind you, and trying to just solo this out is not going to work out. So that's a big resource. I want to say just drain yeah. for Space Station Gaming. Maybe getting a little bit too aggressive. If I were a bet man, I would say that's just unfortunate timing there. I don't think anyone expected for Mitao to just be completely annihilated when he walked out from under the arch there. I think that was SSG had a plan. They were getting ready to go. They started to execute, and then Mitao just kind of gets caught out there by the ruckus. Koa takes down FRZ God. Bonker is in a very, very comfortable position as well, unless he's displaced by said FRZ God, who just fell. I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon or relenting off the trigger. This is going to be one of the easier maps, I think, for NIP, especially with their draft, to just defend on, because they get immediate access to the high ground. They're going to be able to stand up on the balcony, the catwalk, anywhere they want to be in this area for a defense. Space Station have Androxus, and he's the one who can get up there. Ash, if she has her ult, can jump up there. But again, you're committing your full ult. You're committing FRZ God completely to try and retake this area or just take it away from NIP. Uh -oh. You need this to go right for you if you want to be able to hold on. Finding a lot of headshots there, but some return pressure will scare Andrew away. I don't even know who he saw or who he thought was about to put pressure on, but my goodness gracious, it's just looking automatic for the young one right now. He's fighting every headshot he's putting out. There's the first kill on the low ground, but one's return on the high ground. It's up to FRZ God up top. Can he get it done against the Nara? Very healthy champion. And that's really the reason it's going to go her way here. I mean, he simply doesn't have the health to contest. And a lot of the defense, again, it's just look at what the Nara's doing right now. Who's going to take her down? Who's going to be able to get rid of her? It's Androxus. And Androxus is there. Once you get rid of him, you get rid of the pressure. You control the high ground. And that was NIP's defense. But that is also what they need around the point. Last time they got pressured out incredibly early. And if you can see another start like that from Space Station, point right. fights should be pretty easy. Yeah, I will say lucky, but it, it feels very reminiscent of Stonekeeper. SSG get that explosive first blood with the Victor grenades. And they do a really good job kind of coordinating their strikes here as well. Sadak picks up the first blood, but it was really that sort of debate from FRC God where he ends up getting all that peel and Diggy Dog goes down after he what he thought was a surefire thing picked up. That's the moment really that SSG won that first point for me. And that's a, that's a big moment. That's not a high percentage shot. That's not something I think you gamble on again here in this round. So I'd like to see FRC God get involved just a little bit earlier this time. I mean, you've mentioned visible frustration. I can't think of anything that's going to be more frustrating than going in, seeing the one hit targeted on Androxus and then meeting the entire team ready to get their meet and uh -oh. greet going. Having the autograph signed ready and you just what get the? sent back to base. Everything right now is going comfortably. <laughs> that looks like, like ultimate to me. <laughs> he just yeets go off the map. <laughs> there it is. And look at this illusory rift. Perfectly timed. All the healing coming through. Most of it cauterized out. But FRZ guy will get one top off and it's three kills. Four kills there. Four SSG. Everything's still going their way. They use their ultimate 
Hearts first. NIP still have them, but oftentimes I find it, you know, the team that tries to go second can struggle to find a good spot, good value. They're just really struggling to get back to even have a chance in hell at getting this objective. I mean, Sentinels are going to be able to do at least a little bit of work in terms of damage, but Bonker has a lot more going to him or going against him, I want to say, than going for him. Sentinels can only do so much again. He's incredibly slow. You lose Koa, if you lose your front line, where is Vivian going to go? And nowhere is going to feel safe. There it is. And now just so much distraction again in the back line here. You can see running circles around this Vivian. Gets the hands up in time. He's just dancing all around the battlefield. You know they love the salsa down there in Brazil. And FRZ God is showing them how. Teaching a class. Putting on a clinic. Hitting a little yeet down on the objective. Ares is fighting so much damage. He might even be able to get this kill. Being able to find him left, right, center. They grab the point once again and in full control. It never feels like it's going to slip out of their hands. They force NIP to just run and stagger one by one, trying to do whatever they can, and there's just no answer to it. Now, ults are charged off. I'm looking at that overpowered. If you want to throw someone off the map one more time, go for it. <laughs> you want to eat. That's the ultimate for you, my friends. Auto aim. Can't miss it. You just send them off the map, or you can honestly, you hold them there for six seconds either. That's something that more often than not will happen on like a stone keep, right? When there is no available hazard zone to throw someone into, you just hold them up like a sacrificial lamb to your teammates, and then you can dunk them there into the wall there for the 600 damage kill, if you feel so inclined. Evidently, it also turns Inara into a shooting star, as we learned that earlier on funny, in that yeah. round. I've never seen Inara go flying like that, and that is probably not going to happen too often. The way things have been set up for them, though, that's going to be charged up for the con. You can see the accursed arm also almost charged up for FRZ God on this Androx. There's a lot of things with kill potential towards the end. If you need to end someone and get this payload moving again, that is the best way to start it off. The doc just trying to dance here with the enemy front line, trying to find a way in, struggling to get the damage out onto Anar because he's taking a ton himself. Only 200 HP to spare. FRZ God tries to finish what he started. He will not be successful in that endeavor. And this is where we see NIP start to landslide the defense back in their favor. They clear out the high ground. And with that, one minute remains on the clock in SSG. We'll have a fresh chance in about 15 seconds or so. I'm surprised to see Tiggy Dog actually taking the approach on the ground with his front lines as opposed to being up here where we see Bonker. Like, this is typically the elevated position you want to be in when you're looking for the defense. It just gives you so much of an advantage, especially because, again, FRZ God is the only person who can regularly get oh. up to this area. It's going to be dangerous for him and you if he is, but as long as you have retaliation like that, it makes sure that he stays under control. The overpower has popped. It looks like they scooped the enemy support there. Sadak in a bit of a pickle there. Caught between a rock and six guns. Double kill from the high ground. Okay, Kruntzi making the moves here to keep things locked down for NIP. Diggy Dog finds the final frag of that engagement. And with that said, I think the dust is about ready to settle on this round. Ultimate spent, but ultimately unsuccessful for SSG. A lot of commit just to try and get up and only to get up 3-1 there. Would have given comeback mechanic over to NIP. These last seven seconds going down, there's still a little bit of room. You can go in, touch, get that overtime. But you've used so many of your resources. Whether or not you can contest this entire way, find this push, is going to be a different story. Ooh, there it is. Unable to find the resets there. There is an internal cooldown on that availability of the car there for Androxus. He can't get it going there. One for one. Down the stretch. Bit of an awkward situation here on the objective. You got Anar ready to contest from the high ground, and I believe she's positioned herself in just a way where she can actually hold this payload. She is within contest range up on this bridge. Might have to drop down here soon, though. Diff could be able to take him down. Diggy Dog there finds one on Ares to try and slow down this onslaught. But he's not exactly healthy and not exactly ready to get back in there. And there's no one for no way for him to jump down. I mean, he can go down there but it's not going to be the best. 2,300 health is not enough to be able to withstand SSG. And they're trying to kill left, right, center again. Another Three overpower. down, four down. They're set up to be able to push this in. All they have to do is get rid of this Inara. Do they want it. Wall goes up here, trying to buy time. That's all Inara can do, hiding in this corner. But it won't be a fruitful endeavor. She ends up falling, evaporated by the golden weapon of Sadak. Space Station Gaming Prime to take this set and move on. One point away from potentially taking the set. And you can kind of see, I mean, frustration. Once it sets in, you had mentioned it for Diggy Dog, but that can spread not only to the team, but into your play. It starts affecting you, so they have to be able to come in collected for this next round. But the way things have been starting every single round, it's not going their way. It's FRZ God getting into their back line and dealing with a Vivian, dealing with somebody. And even though you see a couple of ults pop towards the end there, Space Station Gaming charged up just enough to be able to come into this strong.
If you stop talking, I mean, you're basically dead in the water here. And so that is something NIP have to be careful about. They have basically every ultimate available to them. Getting close there on the Hexafire and the Sentinels almost ready to be popped out as well. S SG have nearly everything as well, except for that accursed arm. That was expended. This is it, three to one, SSG. They give the comeback mechanics and ninjas in pajamas, but NIP have got to win a fight here. Overpower offers up the sacrificial MK. Cruncy will be the first blood. The gas pedal is being hit, but Gormizer, it is NIP running into a brick wall. Three for nothing, four for nothing, a clean sweep. SSG indomitable on the defense. When you said hit the gas pedal, that was crash test dummy footage. That was just <laughs> slammed into the wall, full stop. A Dread Serpent comes through to try and prevent at least a little bit from that overpowered, but it is clean kills picked up, and now a clean 81% still rising for them. All it takes Hexafire. is a little zone. Hexafire is all they've got. Diving down on the objective. Kate Gruncy's going to give it all he's got here. This is their moment. This is win or go home for NIP. Diggy Dog manages to find one. Kate Gruncy dancing near the objective, trying to get back in irrelevant territory for his team. But SSG wisely just back off. Say, we don't need to lay it all on the line here. We don't need to give you this for free. It's not over yet. A curse at arm. Pop from around the corner. FRZ got trying to get it done, but even he cannot find the kill. Burns the shield, does find the kill. Just a little bit too late, though. They lose mid out, and that's going to cut off their healing. That's going to cut out their survivability. And you can see that Rachel going down. Ares does return a kill, Patience. but there's now an Anara on the point with comeback mechanic. Patience, young one. He goes in, gets the touch onto the objective just to keep this overtime going a little bit longer, but he's running out of cooldowns, running out of time. SSG need a frontliner. Sadat goes down. FRZ God goes down. NIP will hang on. Do or die, and they're at least attempting to do. They get in just in time, and it's all that kill. It's all that one second. One maybe missed shot from the accursed arm that allows that ruckus, that crunchy, to just get a little bit more aggressive. You get rid of mid out, and again, you just chop off the healer. You make sure the rest of them will fall, and it opens up a lot of space. If they get this push, NIP tie it up, and we're at another 3-3. That's what's really critical here for Ninjas and Pajamas. Ultimate resource management as they go forward. Because like you mentioned, they're not able to end the game here in this round. They would only be able to tie it up. But in doing so, they might risk going into the final 3-3 fight as every map has gone. So we have to keep that in mind as well. They risk going into that 3-3 fight without any resources available. We've seen a lot of spawn camping here in this set as well. So if these guys are willing to hold this defense, this amount of fervor, I don't expect to see anything different this time around. I like the way SSG are playing this. They pop the Illusory Rift right now. They pop that Enlightenment just to start getting these skills, just to hold them back. It doesn't matter if you can get return ults from NIP. You're keeping them stalled out. You have a minute left, over a minute left, to charge these back up. If things don't go your way fully, you still Ooh. have time. Bird, nice little kill there on the FRZ God. The support's getting involved. Throwing out heals, but a little bit of stun. Of course, the utility of the Dread Serpent Ultimate. Big AoE fear. It's critical to the success of the team fight for NIP. That was how they tried to start this round, actually, but it didn't go their way. And I got to say, once that comeback mechanic fades, once NIP are no longer down to one, if anything even close to that fight happens again, they're dead in the water. I mean, things are relying very heavily on this Hexafire. And like, even at the end of the round, it comes through. And it's just positioning, right? It's not going to find any crazy kills, but it forces the con just to completely void the fight, run away a different direction, try to get out of line of sight, and it gives a lot of room over to NIP. Right now, the Cursed Arm is coming through. Oh, it's not no. going to find a kill, and Freddy's God are going to actually get pushed back. He thought he had the kill there. You can see he looked away from the Vivian there, but runs under his shield. Unfortunately, that damage does not connect. It is one kill for Sadak, though. He manages to stabilize things for his squad. Vivian went a little too deep there. Bonker manages to take one with him. But at the end of the day, these types of trades are going to be in favor of the defense after all. 10 seconds left, and it's going to be damage dumped from above. Sadak doing whatever he can, but right now it's the stall that is the story. The headshots that are coming through as well, plus the damage amp is going to make it a lot easier for Khan and Ash together to just burn through this in our health bar. Not using any resources. Actually, there is going to be one pop there. The Illusory Rift SSG want to make sure that they hang on to this at least one point lead. They will do so. It's a very quick charging ultimate. Assert dominance, however, is not Gore. How do you feel about that last second decision for SSG to spend some big resources? In my eyes, that seems unnecessary. Like, Assert dominance is one that, admittedly, with or without, I think it's better to always just keep it. There's no reason to use that sure. towards the end. In fact, they were winning the fight. I don't understand why it's going to come either. out. 
an illusory rift being popped when it does. I mean, we've seen just last week in the placement rounds, teams lose because they use their illusory rift before the next round. Going into this, even with 20%, isn't going to be enough to be confident. So it's a big risk from Space Station. Maybe not needed. Maybe, honestly, even going 3-3 is worth keeping that ult online. Okay, Kruntzy being pretty critical there in that last round on Ruckus. Big Hexafire, the only ultimate available for NIP then. Keeps them alive. A couple of kills there down the stretch just to make sure this payload goes their way. SSG, they spend the ultimates. They get the defense, and they put themselves in a situation not to lose either way on this objective. They are going to grab the Ruckus yet again, looking for another sacrificial lamb-style kill. But look at this. The peel from Bird, the Hex fire in the back line things have backfired on ssg they managed to get the kill but not before they've lost two of their own and now being able to put that pressure on you see diggy dog gets aggressive immediately find the kill or at least the pressure keep this con locked down and push back and you can grab this in again comeback mechanic it's only half a comeback mechanic this time for nip but it's still enough to find themselves a hefty lead as they hit 72 percent to six and this is where you want those ultimates aries poked out very early and often 90 percent for the illusory rift that is the only save Grace here for SSG. FRZ got picks up one with his ultimate Rashao dead on the objective. Ares and the Sadak look like they are about ready to join him here. Bonker trying to walk down this con just a little bit too slow, too late. It's taking so long. He's buying so much time and they're losing the fight on the objective. Ares finds two critical kills there for SSG to keep his boys in it. And being able to stay alive as con there, you charge up that overpowered as well. Every single shot feeding into your ult. Yep. Now you're feeling comfortable coming back into this year at 63%. You're looking yeah. at potentially taking down NIP, and you're about to have the ults to do it. Look at the ultimate charges here for NIP. They're all at 50% or lower. K Crunchy just now getting over the halfway mark. Koa goes down. This could be it. SSG upset Europe, and they will move on. They clean it up. That's what they needed to do. That's what they came here to do. They are a team that has been feared in North America. Now I think they're going to be feared a little bit Ooh. in Europe as well as they find themselves in the semifinals. Sadak for the second time this year. Oh, that's all she wrote, folks. SSG. You give them too many chances, and they will make you pay. Beautiful dance. I got to give a lot of credit to, to Sadak there down the stretch. He manages to keep cool, dance around this pillar, and then Ares honestly comes up clutch for me multiple times in that game. The old Nocturnes veteran there stepping in for SSG and it is paying dividends. That's going to be it though. Brazil claim the victory in this first round and move on. Golden Boy, what are your thoughts? Space Whales in the chat for Space Station Gaming. <laughs> That's right, folks. SSG, they come out on top three to one. And that one went, you know, that one could have gone either way, especially with how that round played out. That looked like with the investment that Space Station Gaming made to defend, yeah. it looked like that was going to go 3-3, three, three, and we were going to potentially be in for another one of those distance games. Wow. Bidey, your thoughts? Well, I got to say, like, the most clutch save was that Ying got the ult just at the right moment to secure that retake. If she didn't come off with that cast, Khan would have been dead. The whole team could not be aggressive. So it really just came down to the one E of super healing ult from Ying. Yeah, and, and Bees, what about you? I, you know, obviously, you were going for NIP. You felt, oh, you felt confident boys. in NIP. Uh, I, need, uh, I need a support. But they right had now. such strong performances throughout this entire series. It's really sad to see end in the way that it did. I mean, they had a fantastic pick on the Ash. Um, they were pushing up hard onto the onto the Khan. You almost feel like they were kind of guaranteed the point, and then all of a sudden Ares comes in for the point, find, finds a triple kill that faster than I don't even know what was going on. Unfortunately, we spent they spent too much time uh, focused on the Khan on the high ground, and... I mean, and then with the Inara pushing on to the point also, she got burst so far, she wasn't even yeah. able to contest the point to get the overtime. It's just unfortunate. This is just sometimes how the games go. Yeah, yeah. And, but also though, I mean, I, a credit to Ares there, staying alive as the Khan in that in that situation looked pretty bad he was going up what was it against the uh vivian the vivian going yeah. up against the vivian which you know they had no he had no shields by the way shields completely gone still manages to stay alive pops the immortal manages to like tussle a little bit like those are like big fights right when you're able to pull the attention away from everyone else like that away from the point and start to rack up just more and more percentage that just those are the playmakers
players that you want on your team? The biggest thing I think is like Vivian, you know, when you go straight into record, you don't have caught. I, I wasn't sure if he actually put any caught a record in there, but usually a Vivian just stacks that record up. So when you're in this clutch instance, like, yeah, you broke his shield, but the problem is, is that the Ying ult just happened to come up at the right second. And all he needed to do is just buy time, just stay alive, get one shout off. And then all of a sudden it's like, I put all this damage on Khan. He just walks away and my whole team is dead behind this. Yeah, yeah. that thousand heal that Khan provides himself, plus damage immunity frames, like that takes so much away from the Vivian because that's all she does. Yeah, that's all she has is the DPS. There's nothing else in her kit. Well, here are the post-game stats. PlayStation Gaming versus NIP. SSG comes out on top, and FRZ got 22 eliminations, seven deaths in that game. But he was flying all over the place. Were, he was putting so much pressure from all angles. Ruckus never really got to get the footing going in that game. Like yeah. there was just so much that FRC God was 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 doing, and it was just filling every single gap that it, they needed. It was actually caught three on yeah. the Vivian, so that must mean just maybe the time period it takes for the Vivian to have reloaded, or for the calm when he got round the pillar. That must have been long That's enough to get hard. out of yeah. cauterized and the Ying out then to to proc. That, that was just incredible play by him because it's like to know, like to try to read, you know, you just don't, don't want to get caught, don't want to get caught. All right, left, all right, gotta go right, gotta go left. And then you're just like trying to figure out like, I just need to kill the con, let me kill the con and we can win. And then by the time he figures it out, everybody's dead, yeah. that's it. I mean, I think a big thing here that people don't realize is that Andy is basically the brain maker of plays, you know. All he needs to do is figure out how he gets in. You know, how is he going to get in, cause a distraction, and his whole team just piled on all the pressure behind it. And it was just that synergy, you know. SSG really pulled it away. I mean, both teams are amazing. I want to say that. But, you know, SSG just showing that they have the stuff to potentially take this whole event. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, it, that's a that's a bold that's a bold prediction, Cotton. We'll see if it's going to pay off there. Um, uh, but let's just go on to our Steel Series MVP here. And it is going to be Sadak. And for due reason, this was such a clutch play that kept them in this game. That was this was in the beginning, but later on in this same position, this is where things really started to shake up and Sadak was basically that difference maker. They played absolutely phenomenal, Khan. Khan can sometimes be quite a difficult uh, champion to play, especially in something like a, a Vivian, and uh, he did. He played lights out. Yeah. I think if you find a stats junkie, somebody's going to say, like, Khan's win rate really goes up when he has a friend with Anara, because honestly, like, if Khan is left to do his own things and he's got the point taken care of, he's got a great thing, he can just kind of do his own thing, figure it out, grab that guy, pull him right in, and then you get that nice little execute. <laughs> I just like the, the just the animations of it all, you know. Bidey never never ceases to amaze me here. Um, all right, well, looking forward though, that means Space Station Gaming will take on Team Envy. Oh, and let's take a look at the bracket and see what we have for the semifinals, which will take place tomorrow. And it's going to be Nadas Vincere going up against Fnatic, basically a matchup between. Europe's finest, and then we have Team Envy versus Space Station Gaming, a clash of North America and Latin America. All these games will be best of sevens, I was told, tomorrow, so a lot of Paladins will be played. These are going to be some incredible games, guys. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. I I don't know who to cheer for. You know, I love Envy. I, of course, he, I can see support the country, but I would be more than thrilled to see SSG come through. You know, the Borker, he cheers for everybody. Yes, the Borker cheers for everyone, and the Borker's also cheering for the Paladins. Console Wars 2018, because we will have our Xbox, semi, our Xbox semifinals, Xbox finals coming up next. It is going to be Onslaught going up against Vex Gaming, and then tomorrow we will have Flashpoint versus Elevate. Those are going to be some games that you'll definitely want to check out that uh, Xbox final will be coming up after this. So while we're done with the Paladins World Championship, time for some console wars. I'm ready for the hype. I'm ready. Right. I'm, I'm staying here. I'm watching on the big screen. I can't wait. Last year opened my eyes to the power of the console boys, <laughs> and I cannot wait to see them perform again. They were getting up. They were talking trash. It was awesome, yeah. and I hope they all do it again. But for now, we're going to send it over to an interview with your winning team, Space Station Gaming, in the back. From PGS to placements and now to semifinals, you guys just upset NIP. You are coming in from Brazil. How are you feeling right now after that win? Amazing. 
<laughs> feeling happy, feeling really happy. Really good stuff from all you guys. Sadak, this is not your first time to the semifinals. Obviously, you were here last year, and that's this is where you fell short in the next round. What are you guys going to do? What's the conversation like tonight to prepare for next matchup and to make it all the way? So we know next match is going to be difficult, but we, I'm sure we are going to prepare for that. So pretty good. So we've always mentioned every time you guys play that not only do the hopes of Brazil come with you, but now you have the rest of Latin America coming in as well since we saw Zaga get taken out during placements. But now you have Space Station Gaming all riding on you as well with the departure of the Smite team earlier. How are you feeling about your chances of success going up against the likes of Envy? Pressure. Uh, <laughs> we are really prepared. We came here like really good to this land. Uh, it's a uh, screen partner, Envy. We used to scream against them, but now it's on land, now it's really different. And let's see what happens. I want to talk a little bit about the drafts today, because you guys pulled out the first three DPS composition of the event. Sadak, I feel like you were being personally attacked in these drafts. I mean, they were banning out your Ruckus, they're taking your Ash, then they're banning out Cassie. Were you guys expecting to have to pull out a three DPS comp? Were you guys expecting to have to go a little bit deeper into the pockets for this set? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, Banning tanks is meta right now, so going 3 DPS is like, we know we have to do that. I gotta be honest, Aries, on Stone Keep, your victor was probably the most impressive that I have seen today. Outside of Bittner, he looked pretty good on it too. But I gotta be honest, this is not something I'm really used to seeing from you. Is this something you think you're gonna have to lean on a little bit heavier going forward in the event? Uh, yeah, uh, before I played some tanks, I was main DPS, so I can play any DPS, I can play anything. I'm ready to play with any character that my team needs me, so I'm here. Victor, Cassie, and Gotcha. Me. I just want to get a, a FRZ got a thumbs up for your Eevee today. Are you feeling good about the Eevee performance? Maybe. Oh, He's we're going to get to really hear from good. him on the mic himself. Talk to me a little bit about that Eevee performance. I know, you know, with Victor and Eevee, it can be a little bit of like that one-two punch, right? Victor's got to set it up, and then you've got to drive it home. It was kind of rough early on in that Stone Keep game, but how do you keep your cool, and how do you focus up and make sure that you can pull through in the late game? He said it was easy. <laughs> Gentlemen, before, uh, it's easy. Before we let you on a go, we want to let you give a shout out real quick to anyone back in Brazil or back home that you might want to say hey to. Uh, I just want to say, can I say in Portuguese? Yes, please. Uh, quero agradecer todo o apoio de todo mundo que vem assistindo a gente. A galera tá, tá curtindo o apoio de vocês, então, família, namorada, beijo para vocês. A gente ama vocês. E todos os fãs, não, não desiste da gente, a gente está aqui desde o início para jogar por vocês, pela gente também. Então, vamos lá, vamos até o final, vamos representar o Brasil. Tamo junto. Beautiful, guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations Hold on up. the victory. I am FRZ God's official translator. Okay. He told me that. And he says that uh, he's not slowing down and these guys are about to be world champions. Beautiful. Love it. Guys on the desk, thank you so much. Take us away. Thank you.